So I'm going to hop on. We will do a very abbreviated introduction. You have to do. <laughs> okay. Welcome no, to uh, the Reinventing the Tattoo Now, Reinventing the Tattoo Network. And this is a very special edition of the history of tattoo conventions with Alex Van Dutch and uh, Gippy from Italy. They're both from Italy, but they are in Vietnam. So Alex, let us know uh, a little bit about, let, let us know a little bit about uh, where you're beaming in from and then just get started. I'm hopping in the back. Okay, so well, thank you, Gig. So yeah, we've been in from Vietnam, exactly from uh, the city of Da Nang, which is in uh, central Vietnam. It's right on the beach. Uh, we've been from my uh, tattoo studio, which is called Dragon City Inc. Opened uh, a bit more than a year ago in the middle of the pandemic. And uh, yeah, the idea of the studio was to uh, host some of the very best Vietnamese tattoo artists and a lot of international tattoo artists. A lot of my friends are tattoo artists, so to me that made sense to create this place here where we could display different form of arm, sorry, different forms of art from different places and put Vietnam on the map of tattooing because this is a country with incredible potentials. Uh, tattooing is still fairly new. Um, on a professional level, it's anywhere between 10 to 15 years depending on you, who you ask. Uh, so yeah, it's still very new uh, into this landscape, but it's, it's growing incredibly fast. There's a lot going on. So, you know, to me, this is a uh, very good place to be in. And uh, yeah, today I'm here with uh, Mr. GP Rondinella from Italy, from Rome. We're actually both from Rome. Uh, he's spending some time here in, uh, in Da Nang. And uh, um, we, we always talk a lot. And yeah. <laughs> he sh he sh actually, he shares a lot of stories with me. I don't have as much as he does, you know, to tell him, but I normally listen to a lot of his stories about tattooing, traveling, and all the kind of crazy experiences that he faced anywhere in the world. So I thought, hey, this could be a good time to sit together. We're sitting here very cozy, by the way. <laughs> normally, we do this online at a distance. Uh, but uh, yeah, today we we were lucky enough to sit next to each other and and just just hear from GP his uh, his story, which again, like I think, is incredibly interesting. Uh, yeah, GP has been around for a little while. You want to share like how long have you been involved in to? Well, uh, I think it's a quite a long time. It's about more or less. Uh, 45 years, even something more. I mean, I mean, I happened to make a first tattoo for just for fun on uh, on a friend of mine. She was American in uh, New Delhi in 1970. I mean, she had a, a known uh, done by a street tattooer in India, and they didn't come up proper. I was always fascinated with tattooing. I don't know why. And so I went over with some. Uh, where, where did you see your first tattoos? I mean, how, how did it happen? I don't know why, but you must have seen some tattoos before. The first tattoo I've seen, I was uh, maybe five or six or seven. And um, my grandfather, my mother's father, he had a couple of tattoos on his arm. And he was a, an incredible man because, well, probably, uh, probably was a gypsy. Because he had, a, when he was young, he had a circus. So that was in the beginning, the last century, and the beginning of the other century. So uh, who had the circus at the time in Italy? Uh, it was an acrobat who was walking on the rope, and uh, the other people in the family were doing other things. Uh, there must be a gypsy, more or less. It's, it's, it's possible. It's very possible. Very cool. Yeah, because he, has, he had golden earrings, long hair, a gun, and in his belt, and uh, he was a funny old man. And another one was a, a kind of a cousin that I had, that always in the in the fifty, you know, in, in the late fifties, beginning late fifties, he came back from Australia, where he was hunting cockatrice, 
So he came back with those big tattoos on his arm, dead before the zone of eagles and blah, blah, blah. And so being a young kid, I was fascinated with these colors, with this, uh, I don't know, probably must have been... Uh, <laughs> Love at first sight. But Love at first sight. When, did, when did the guy didn't get these tattoos in Australia? Like this well, cousin? Well, he got uh, these tattoos in Australia somewhere, I don't know where he was, in, probably in a jungle somewhere, because he was hunting coat. Right. So uh, he came from, from the Italian national parachute uh, force, then he went to here in Vietnam, unfortunately, during the war with the Foreign Legion. And then after the Foreign Legion, he went to Australia and uh, then he came back to Italy. And then he became a straight normal person, incredible, uh, working in, uh, for the government with big tattoos of his arm, with his shirt on, because at the time, of course, uh, tattooing was not very popular in Italy. It was only for criminals, for, 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 for gangsters, for prostitutes, for, I mean, usual things. All the humanity. All that, the uh, humanity that deserved. <laughs> that has tattoos. This, so this is like in the 70s, right? You're talking about... Oh, now, uh, now we're talking... When you were a kid. When I was a kid, yeah. When so. I was a kid. And then in the beginning, in the 60s. In the 60s. In oh. the end of the 50s. Beginning of the 60s. So in the 50s, 60s in Italy, you still had quite a... When I came back, to, when I came back from India the first time on uh, uh, 70, uh, I just had a small tattoo done in Kathmandu on the, in the street. On a train. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, equipment did I have? It was, uh, it's a sun. You want to show it? You got to... Uh, well, it's a, it's a sun, I, probably, I know you can see it. Made in Kathmandu. Made in Kathmandu in 1970. And in it's still street, there, still there. In the street. Yeah. And um, with the, it was a Nepalese ruby done with the pencil and then the, the races. Uh, the people on the on the buses, when I was getting the buses to the, to the city or even to the city in the summer, they would look at me like, a, you know, just running away. I got to a guy. Yeah, it was a, a criminal with that. This was in Italy. It was in Italy, exactly. Then the year after, uh, coming back from India, the same, I happened to stop in uh, London and I wanted to get a property. So I ended up in this uh, incredible shop and uh, I had a, a tattoo done by, uh, it's an honor for me, by Leslie Burchett. But at the time, I didn't even know who the guy was. I didn't know the, who Burchett was. He became, became a legend after. He, no, I mean, he was a legend already. Well, right. But I didn't know nothing about it. So I got this butterfly from, uh, from uh, Leslie Davis. And there was my first Robert tattoo. I mean, he's still here from after 50 years. And you I can see the butterfly here. So, okay, so Davis. Why, why did you decide to tattoo yourself in a time where tattoos were still not really well seen, at least in Italy? No idea. I was fascinated by tattooing. I was collecting all pieces of shit or papers or whatever I could find in magazines and, uh, and all uh, just to keep it. I don't know. It was something probably was in, my, in myself. I didn't know. I didn't know it. And uh, boom. Yeah, <laughs> you just wanted to do it. I just wanted to do it. I just was fascinating by tattooing. I was collecting things and uh, I was trying to, to know something, but I couldn't know nothing because it was very difficult at the time. Of course, yeah. yeah no very, very difficult. I mean, the, the, the first machine I got, I got it in India from uh, a street tattooer. It was in Goa working in the market on the floor and he's the same guy that also Felix, Felix Liu, Felix Liu. Uh, met while we were in India. So he got I, the I machine met, from met, the met, No, I don't know if Felix got a machine from the same guy. Probably Felix got a machine in uh, Germany, in Switzerland, uh, even before. I got my first machine from him, from the guy, because in Italy, I mean, Felix was from Germany, okay? So in Germany, uh, tattooing was uh, already Developed yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Warlich and all the other guys in, uh, in uh, Hamburg and so on. In Italy, which was nothing. Uh, in Italy, the doing was in jail. 
So no way. It was only in the, in the, about seventy five. It started to come out a little bit. It started to come out a little bit because they were, I mean, me in Rome, Gian Maurizio and Dino Spadaccini in Milan. Gian Maurizio Faccioni. Gian Maurizio Faccioni, Mino Spadaccini, and Marco Pisa in Bologna. So you were four. We were three or four of us. Three or four that were in Italy. But we were, we were working on the side, not officially. So you didn't have a shop at the time. We didn't have a shop. We didn't have nothing. Because and, and there were no there, shops at all, right? There were no shops at all. The first shop, official shop, the open in Italy, was in Bologna by Marco Pisa in 1985, just after Lazio and Zebra, the exhibition was in Rome. And I opened a few months after, because in Rome they were a little bit more conservative, in the Pope, blah, 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 in at the beginning of 86. So you opened the first tattoo shop in Rome. Yeah, the official first tattoo shop. The first official tattoo shop yeah. in Rome was by GP. I, I, mean, I was working even before, but it was not official. I mean, I was working in a, in a house. I had a place in the house, uh, very nice, and uh, with a garden and so on. But it wasn't official. I was paying taxes again in Brazil, just on the beach. And I got a nice tattoo here, the pinky yan. Mm -hmm. Put on me while in the house. So I don't know if somebody can see this. So, and no so, pinky yarn tattoo, 1985. Yeah, well, so that's quite a while ago. <laughs> yeah, was, quite yeah. Ago. So, yeah. And, and officially, tattooing in Italy started in 1985. Because open the first shops. Just a few months before, because what happened? That somebody in the uh, in the community center in Rome, I mean, uh, from the government, decided to make an exhibition uh, on tattooing. I mean, he was a great guy, he was the, the one for culture. And, and somebody um, uh, doing exhibition, they met him, and they had this idea to make uh, an exhibition on tattooing. Nobody ever done yeah, it before. Which at the time was almost unknown. I mean, like, exactly. it wasn't mainstream. Yeah. Well, that's unknown. I mean, I had somebody put some bits and pieces of newspaper. I had to be on the beach, blah, 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 blah. It's nothing. So this guy, this couple, they made, uh, they made it together with Don and Hardy. And uh, with the help of Ed, they just made up this beautiful uh, exhibition that lasted three weeks in Rome. And it about the doing. About the doing. And it was called Lazino e la Zeppa. The donkey and the zebra. Was this the real first type of tattoo event in Italy? It was or... the first tattoo event in Italy. It was uh, uh, a tattoo exhibition that then turned into a convention. Because, okay, of course, people start coming, they're paying, uh, blah, blah, blah. But everything was still under the table. Um, um, okay. Because it was not a convention. Was we couldn't a convention. do a convention was an exhibition. So was there any life to do it? There was a life to do it, sure, sure, sure. So, for three weeks. For three weeks. Three, three weeks. weeks. Three weeks of life to do it in Rome. Yeah. In 1980. 19, March 1985. 85. And that was the beginning of official tattooing in the country. So this was even before the first events by Marco Leone in Bologna. Marco Leone in Bologna was in 1993. Very good. A long time after it. Long time after. The first Italian convention was in 1990 in Bologna. So, yeah, this, by the way, we had an interview with Marco like a while ago. I don't remember it was 1993. I remember it was like the 80s, but it was 1993. Yeah. And uh, so you witnessed the first event in 1995. It was before Marco, before Marco. Who was there? Who attended the event? Who were some of the people? Do you remember some of the people that were there at the time? Hanky Banky was there, Shotsi Gordon, Live Tattoo, uh, Sulu Abre, Dennis Cockle, uh, The Dutchman, uh, so many. Godzueda. Leo, Leo, of course. Uh, there were so many, I can't remember. Um, uh, Bill Solomon. We're talking about old giants of tattooing, I mean, which were there at the time. A lot of people, a lot of people. It was a great. Uh, 
Oriyoshi, of course. Oriyoshi. Oriyoshi in the Swedish family. And by the way, Oriyoshi tattooed you as well, right? Tattooed me as well. Here in the convention is more uh, here flowers over here, then maybe another one in my shop on the right hand. That is not finished yet. He has to finish it after. Oriyoshi, if you still have some time. <laughs> well, 45 years later. Yes, one of these days I have to go and see. Yeah, I want to finish. You hurry up. Because well, we are not here. <laughs> That would be nice. And um, yeah, there were a lot of people, a lot of people, and a lot of great people. They are still working. They're now, still around today. They're still around today. I saw them recently. I saw Leo. It was very nice to, to see him after many years. And uh, nice. So, how did the public, the general public, Reacted. Was it even the public allowed, or was something only for? No, 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 no. It was, it was an exhibition. It was an, an exhibition, exhi a free exhibition. Okay. And it was okay. done in the, in the forum. Uh, the old part of the Roman history was all over. It was bloody cold because there were no windows, no, no, no doors, no nothing. It was March. It was cold. But it was. I don't know how many thousand people came in the in the show. I don't know how many hundreds of got to do this. Wow. It was really incredible, really incredible. So first we got to event in Italy. And that was the beginning. And then in this event, I had the, the chance of, uh, of uh, having this guy that came up and said, oh, the young publisher, I would like to do a book on the history of tattooing. Nobody knew nothing about it. But I had a lot of books that I bought and there was at the time there was still no any real publications in Italian. No, nothing, absolutely nothing. So, so um, he convinced me to make uh, this book. I'm not a writer, but so then I start reading again all the books that I had. They were almost all in English, of course. And so we came up with the uh, design upon Gaino. Senor di Gaino. Senor di Gaino. Senor di Gaino. It was the first. Uh, book in, in Italian on the history of tattooing, and it was done also in the English version. And it's been, I believe, sold more in, uh, in the States and uh, abroad than in Italy, because in Italy they didn't <laughs> <laughs> distribute it at all. Well, maybe there were more Italians in the south of Italy, I mean, it's a country of migrants as well. Yeah. So No, but there is a, a funny story about the, the, the distribution distributing the, the book. I mean, uh, the guy gave the distribution of the book to a friend of his from a small city where the publishing house was. And he's supposed to distribute the book all over Italy. But the guy was about 40 at the time, 45, I don't know. And he ran away with an 18 years old girl of his town. So he disappeared and not distribute the book anymore. That was fun. And the book is, is it still around? Is that a collector item? The book is a collector item. It's a very difficult to find. And it was expensive at the time because it was a very nice book, very nicely made. And it's very expensive and very difficult to find right now. Very difficult. In Italy, it's almost impossible. Uh, I saw on eBay in the States that somebody is selling it for 300, 400 dollars. How long did it take you? Did it take you to 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 make this book? Uh, How long have you been working on it? I worked there for about a couple of months, reading again everything and collecting, and then uh, had hardly helped me to 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 collect all the pictures because I mean I didn't have I mean I had connections on the guy that were in the uh, uh, exhibition in Rome, but then I needed more pictures to to fill up the book to fill up the book. So I call ahead and he gave me a list, a mailing list of uh, a lot of uh, artists. And uh, so I sent letters to everybody. And I have to say that everybody was fantastic, sending me pile of pictures to publish for you. Yeah. That's interesting. And uh... it was nice. Big, I mean, I didn't do nothing for, for good uh, choosing and uh, putting together the pictures and all because I don't know, all this is. Completely out of mind. We also like background stories, like around yeah. many of the pictures and the artists. And I think this was again like the real, the first time that in Italy. It was the first time in Italy they could read something about the history of the. 
in Italia. In Italia, yeah. So you see, like this is why I'm, I'm so happy and honored to to do to have this uh, interview here with GP because I mean, you know, it's 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 a pretty big historical figure. A few years after '85, there was a, a, well, there was a small convention in Italy before Bologna, and uh, Gemma Vizio Fazzoni made it in uh, Milan. But it was that's something I don't you know. It was I mean it was. Even there, it was a convention where it was a little bit underground. Underground, not official, not, not really official. It was in a theater, and it was not a lot of punks and uh, art. Theater in Milan. What was the name? Uh, oh my God! I don't know even if he had a name. <laughs> <laughs> tattoo meeting in, uh, in was a tattoo yeah. meeting in, in Milan in this uh, theater, Gian Maurizio. Organize everything. Um, Oriyoshi came. Uh, Oriyoshi is from Asia. Hank from Amsterdam. Then I think there were at the end. I think the bank again. I think there were only us, a little bit known, and all the others were young tattooists from Milan. Mm. Some punks and was. That was already the, the second generation of. That was starting of the, the when, well, in Italy, I'd say they were the first generation because we were out of the generation. <laughs> we were before the first before generation. The first generation. <laughs> so, how was the relation between the tattoo artists in the early 80s, right? When, when tattooing started to emerge? Uh, well, a great, I mean, a great uh, we have to thank to, to a couple that. They are no longer with us now that they made the first tattoo magazine, it was a Tattoo Review. Tattoo Review, yeah. Tattoo Review that I after became uh, Tattoo Review. I have a lot of them. And uh, Tattoo Review, they made, of course, the first uh, uh, almanac. Yeah, almanac. Yeah, all the tattooists in Italy. So people were sending pictures and uh, they make all the addresses and blah, blah, blah. Uh, there was a lot of people to doing at the moment. I mean, because it spread very, very fast, very fast. Even because there was somebody selling uh, equipment, unfortunately, to so, catch and dogs. <laughs> so okay, so this is the other, the other thing. I mean, back then, like when when tattooing wasn't a real industry. No, it was, it was, not, it was not a real industry. Uh, but how would you get all the equipment? How would you? Have, where would you find the machines? Why would you find a college? Well, you know, I was lucky because at the time, um, after I came back from India, I was, uh, I was employed by an, uh, an island, hmm. Alitalia, the old Alitalia, Italian island. Yes. So I had the chance to, to, to move myself pretty, pretty easy. Uh, once I ended up in, uh, in, Amst in Copenhagen, and I was trying to buy a machine, so I went on uh, the heaven. And I entered the two shop and uh, asked oh, in the afternoon, these three guys, I think it was a tattoo holder, uh, these three old guys there with a cup of coffee sitting there, they looked at me when I, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, fellow, what do you want? I, uh, well, I would like to buy a machine. So they look at me and say, are you a tattooist? I say, well, no. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> but then in the end, one day said, okay, I can sell you all my studio and all my sheets and everything. But he asked me an outrageous amount of money. So I said, okay, thanks. Can't do that. Thank you very much. Then I ended up once in uh, Malta. And I mean, my girlfriend at the time, she ended up in Malta. She came back from the flight. I mean, she was a, a stewardess. She said, well, I found uh, uh, an old man in Malta that uh, is willing to sell the machine. So a few days after I took the flight, went to Malta. Yeah. I arrived in this, uh, this shop in Lavaletta, and I find this young guy painting the walls. He said, ah, good morning. Ah, good morning. Uh, Mr. Charlie Panis? Uh, Charlie Panis, what, why? Well, he's supposed to sell me a machine. Ah, no, 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 Mr. Charlie Panis is dead. Uh, if you want, I sell you the machine. 
So I was a little bit suspicious and I couldn't understand this. So I said, well, okay, I'll come back. I had Charlie uh, uh, address, so I went to Salima. I knock on the door and this old man came out and said, are you Charlie Barnes? Oh, yeah, I'm a Charlie Barnes. Oh, I thought you were dead. Oh, what do you mean I'm dead? <laughs> How many times did he die? <laughs> oh, my God. And he was a great, great old man because he gave me his machines, two machines, that now we have one in uh, Marco Pisa collection, and the other one in uh, Gabriele Donini, my, my, ah, I'm doing yeah, my yeah. studio in Rome, my old studio. Which is still there. It's still there. It's still, still exists, the studio, still, different still location. Exists. From 1986, uh, February 1986, the studio still exists. It's a different location, mm -hmm. a different uh, guy working, but uh, still exists. So he gave me these two machines. He gave me some pieces of paper, flashes and all. A beautiful book, uh, watercolor, that is still in the shop. I gave it to Gabriele years ago. Oh, uh, like flash art or water. Flash, flash, but watercolor painting. Oh, nice. Beautiful. I mean, it's a, uh, Hank is, is going crazy when you see it. That he wants to buy it, but Gabriel. I know, I know Hanky, uh, he, got, he got a few items from the desert. I mean, you know, like. Hanky got some well, stuff everywhere in the world. The and, thing uh, is, I'll tell you about Charlie first. Okay. Charlie gave me some uh, colors, powders, and uh, something, well, the most important thing two addresses, one in the States. It was uh, Spalding and Rogers, Fins. and the other one, Davis in England. So, I mean, there was gold, of course. So, for me, it was very easy to go to England. So, I started to go to England and buy in uh, uh, was somewhere on the coast of England in the house, and he was selling. Uh, he was a brother of, uh, of uh, <clears throat> Birchett. Or Leslie Burchett, and uh, he started selling me machines and colors and blah, 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 blah. So I started doing with the proper machine. Probably. Because before I was practicing and playing with the Indian machine and Charlie Barnett's machine, but if the, you see them now, unbelievable. They are really unbelievable. In, in which way? And what you should do, I mean, it's, it's incredible to explain to them. I mean, uh, <laughs> Pieces of uh, belts and pieces of, I don't know what it was. It was the, um, an eraser um, instead of the grommets and the, 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 the needle bar of the Indian machine was made of a bamboo. A bamboo stick. Bamboo stick. And the needles were done with the, the thread and, and glue. So, um, <laughs> not sterilized. <laughs> well, at the time, uh, no gloves, no sterilization. Uh, and you got one of those tattoos that are on your skin on the streets. I got uh, quite a few. Oh, quite a few. Yeah. And you one in like Kathmandu. It. No, three in Kathmandu, one in Bombay, uh, one in uh, Goa, one in Singapore. So those guys like making tattoos on the street, they would just dip the same needle and the same ink that anybody else would use or that would do was a bamboo carpet in the middle of the street. Right. Uh, car battery with a with sponge and a dirty wall on the side. Uh, a pile of uh, the, the batteries as a power pack. A little jug of oil, uh, coconut oil. And a little thing of ink. That was all. That was, that was the, those were the first those were the streets. Days. Those, those were the days. days. Those were the real days of tattooing. Yeah. I mean, I think besides prison tattooing, oh, this was well, probably, well, yeah, probably the prison tattooing was even better. <laughs> even better. <laughs> the, the one that I got in Kathmandu, it was uh, outside Darbar Square, in the main square in Kathmandu, on the side where the, the guru women, the, the, the Sherpa women, used to start going up to the mountains and then they were stopping and get this tribal, local tribal things. And it was cows and goats and, and it was 1970. So what, what, what does it mean, you know, like what, what does it mean for you 
a tattoo, you know, like, yeah, you, you just told me like you, you really wanted to have it at a certain point, but what does a tattoo represent for you? I don't know, I was fascinated by tattooing. Uh, I got through tattoos, as you can see, I don't have many tattoos at all. But they all have a story. But each one of them has a story. So anytime I look one of them, I remember something. In the old days, everybody, I mean, the old guys, they know it. Once you saw a man and you could read him, you could see who he was, more or less, from his tattoos. Yes. And nowadays, it's a little bit difficult to... <laughs> It's, it, it changes a little bit. It changes a lot. It yeah. changes a lot. It it's, changes. Uh, I mean, before tattooing was uh, having uh, your, your story. On, yes. And how about now? Now is to have uh, internet story. <laughs> internet story. Something downloaded from the internet. You download from the internet. From, 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 from all this. Uh, uh, I'm not into... <clears throat> Social uh, socials anymore, so, but uh, it's different. It's totally different. I mean, nowadays you go fantastic artists, fantastic, unbelievable artists. Yes, but I'm sorry. I recall them as painters, as a skin painters. The, I think once you mentioned they're more illustrated. They're more illustrated. They're more illustrated. Exactly, because now it's a, it's a I mean, it, I don't recall it tattooing anymore. I mean, uh, sure. I mean, it's tattooing because you put a needle Under in the skin, skin, color in the skin. But as we can see, and you know it, and maybe everybody know it, uh, a lot of the work that is done today, it disappears after a short while, or it goes all confused after a short while, because the technique is different. You go to a convention today, and you don't hear anymore the buzz of the machine. I mean, the buzz is in the years back. You were walking in any city uh, along the, 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 the seaside or whatever, and once all of a sudden you could see, wow, look, where is it? <laughs> you could realize there was a tattoo place yeah. in Paris, in London, in, in, in Amsterdam. And nowadays you go into the convention and you barely see one or two coin machines going on. Very rare. Very rare. Yeah, I think like for I mean this new technology with the rotary machines, I think it's it's probably a lot easier. Well, it's, 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 it's the changing, it's the changing time. I mean it's okay. Uh, but um, personally I don't uh, I don't belong anymore to this, uh, to this world. I still go sometimes to some tattoo convention. They invite me, um, especially in Italy. I became like a, um, was it Santino? <laughs> I don't know how you say it in English. Santino da mettere in convention. Yeah, the Santino, I mean, for the Catholic, the Santino is a small image of the saint, of the, the Virgin Mary. Uh, oh, Jimmy. master. I'm not a master. I'm just old, that's all. Um, you were there before everyone. Else. I mean, yeah, I was there before. It's okay. But, but I'm not a master. I, I don't recall myself as a master anyhow, because I'm not a master. I'm a, just a normal uh, tattooer. tattooer. So do you define yourself as uh, an artist or a tattooer? I'm a tattooer. What's the difference? Well, an artist, I mean, in English, in England, there would be... In the English language, there was always this uh, uh, difference, a tattooer and a tattooist. A tattooist is an artist. A tattooer is a worker, is a plumber, is a carpenter, is uh, something that goes with his hands. And I rather recall myself as a tattooer because I'm not an artist. I mean, I can do a design. I can't take a, a brush pen and go on the body. Bah, 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 like this, and then make a free hand. First of all, I don't understand free hand because you spend a long time doing things free hand. Uh, you could just spend uh, half an hour doing a paper, it's easier to dance and forget about it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we don't have today a craze for a collection 
of all stencil in plastic, in paper. I mean, today is a big collection of uh, stencil and flashes and all. Uh, in the old days, it wasn't like this. I mean, I've been collecting uh, stuff all over Asia for years. In fact, I got a couple before. Yeah. You have a couple, and uh, uh, Hank has a few in his collection, Marco Pisa has a few, has a lot in his collection, and many other, even in the States. They have a lot of my sheets that I found. Sheets, machines, tools. And that they are put it in the old collections. They yeah. just put it in their collections. Because in the old days, I, I bought so much of it that I didn't give, I didn't pay attention to it. I mean, it was, for me, it was like I was selling that for, for, to friends for, for, for nothing. Because uh, I didn't have an idea that it could become so well, yeah, at least you had a good time. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, right. good time. And then, by the way, like, is some of your collection? I mean, GP uh, spends a lot of time uh, at the tattoo museum, <laughs> no? yeah. It's, it's, totally the, the it's a very, very nice, uh, very nice place. Very collections, uh, tattoo collection in Italy. Uh, is, is the largest a lot of stuff, right? is the large uh -huh. is the largest collection of American uh, history tattooing uh, because uh, like Marco Marco Pisa I think he has uh, the largest of English English tattooing uh, and the English tattooing uh, English few American and Asia because a lot of my collection of India went to uh, Asia went to Marco okay and how about Italian history? Any any place where you still have some some stuff coming out of Italy? I mean, no, in the last 40, nothing, 50, I mean, 60 years. Not, no, there is nothing because in Italy it didn't exist. I mean, there is a picture that uh, a guy making a research on Charlie Palm in Zapata. In fact, he's going to publish uh, this shortly a book called Michel Lesco, and he's going to publish a book of uh, history of the doing in Malta. In Malta. Yeah, Malta was, uh, it was always been uh, uh, a point for the British Navy. Oh, yeah, well, it's so, an island. It's an island. island. Uh, sailors. sailors. And uh, Charlie Barnes was one of the biggest, I mean, the most known artist in, uh, or, or tattooer, as you want to, tattooer, as you want to look, call him, in, uh, in Malta. And he saw, he sent me some pictures a few, few, few months ago. A year ago, of Charlie in his young age, and an Italian tattooist that was tattooing in Malta. The picture must have been probably 1910, 1920. Well, over 100 years ago. What was the name of the guy? Um, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Yeah. Uh, there is a, 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 a print, a nice print that. Hank Shimmer, Hanky Banky, used on this book. The, is, that, is that the cover of that the, book? Exactly, the cover of that book. Can I get it? Sure. What's it? And that, uh, that is probably the first image of tattooing in Italy. Because it goes up to late, se late 79. This was uh, made by Hanky Banky. This is book made out of yeah. exactly. But how about this print here? This print, I found this print in the shop uh, about 50, over 50 years ago. And, and I bought it for, 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 for not for a week ago. Where, where was it? I was a print shop. Where? In Rome. In uh, Rome. 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 Just in the main, uh, in the north uh, section of uh, nice shops in Rome. It was an, an antique print shop. And so I bought it. As I said, I was collecting anything I could find around. And then years back, I sold it to, to Hank. And he made it now, he's in his collection. So even in this book, there is something of you. Yeah, there are some, some, uh, some, some of my prints. Is in, there any other prints? No, no any, no, any other prints of Italian tattooing. Uh, uh, yes, there are some other. 
designs of prints of uh, old designs because in Italy we had uh, uh, in 1800 in the end of 1800 beginning of 1900 we had uh, Cesare Lombroso Cesare Lombroso was uh, an anthropologist that he became uh, afterwards um, a criminologist oh. and so he made uh, a research in Italy in the prison so we had this idea in Italy that the tattooing was for prisoners, because when he went into the prison collecting, copying designs for the, for the inmates, they had tattoos. But he made, uh, as I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he made a bad mistake, because all the prisoners at the moment in Italy, sure they were inmates, but uh, eighty percent of them they were soldiers and officers of the army of the south before the because italy was divided in three parts yes okay it was the vatican in the sea in the center south of italy had the king and north of italy had a bunch of different uh, kings and blah 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 yes. <laughs> so garibaldi famous garibaldi one of our heroes uh, kind yeah, of, I mean, kind of, kind of, kind of I mean, for me, he was a pilot. There you go. <laughs> he, was. he was a pilot. I mean, he was a mercenary. Not a, a, he had tattoos, and he, he was a, a sailor. He was one of the first famous yeah. Yeah. tattooed uh, guys. He, was, he, had, he had tattoos. And uh, anyway, this Lombroso uh, made this research and found out all these people, all these inmates, they were. He had tattoos, but they were officers and army men from, from the south. Where did they collect those tattoos? From where? He was collecting the image of tattoos because he was convinced that uh, people with tattoos were criminals. I mean, he was convinced that if you had your ears very large, you were a criminal. If your nose wasn't in the proper uh, Position was a thing. You have a so he thought there was some if kind of were, genetics. Uh, thinking in, in the south, in the south of Italy, in, in Napoli, the word the feminelli. Oh. Feminelli are the, the, the nowadays. Yeah, feminated people. I mean, they were criminals because they were feminated. I mean, he was a little bit twisted, man. And a bit conservative as well. Uh, yeah. Well, you are kind to say conservative. <laughs> and after him, there were another few um, teachers and professors, De Biase and uh, uh, another one, I don't remember the name. They wrote books of tattooing that we can still find in Italy. And uh, I mean, it's very difficult to find them now because they belong to uh, 1920, 1910, even before. So there are all these pictures drawn by, by, by hand of the inmates that had tattoos. So that was the first book on the history, not on the history of tattoo, on, tattoo. on criminal, uh, criminal tattoo. Criminal tattoo. Exactly. Tattoo. exactly. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. So we have in Italy also uh, documentation of uh, religious tattoo. Hmm. That now Jonathan is made in Jonah is made in uh, in Italy. Jonah John, no, Jonah Jonah from uh, Kona. Ah, okay. um, he's a guy that he took back. I mean, there is the, this religious history that uh, the house of the Virgin Mary flow with the angels all the way from uh, Bethlehem to Italy in a monastery. Blah 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 blah. For who is Catholic and. Um, the monk in uh, this, not the monk, the cobbler of the city, they start doing uh, with, uh, with something that they use for sewing shoes, putting tattoos on the pilgrims that they were going to see this house mm -hmm. in the monastery. So there is a large uh, collection of uh, wooden blocks like like the one in uh, Israel, the same right? one yeah, in Israel. Israel. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. 
So I, I, I know this story about, about exactly. So in Israel, he, he has them in uh, in the shop. The one in Italy, if you are in the monastery and it's very difficult to look at them, and some other uh, in the museum that I don't know why is closed at the moment, and it's very difficult to see them. So almost none of those uh, wood blocks are very, very rare, them. very rare to see them. The original one is very rare to see them. If those were the really first stencils. Exactly. The first, first stencils of religious tattooing in the history of religious tattooing. But even then, we have a story uh, in religious tattooing because tattooing in Italy has never been popular because in 19, 1900, Pope Adrian I decided that tattooing was not for a good Christian because the body was done in the image of God. So, tattooing was not. But if tattooing was done in the name of God, then it was okay. That was okay. Right. So like you don't want you wanna when you do a tattoo and you don't want to make your mother cry. Right. But you make, it, you make a tattoo, I love your mama. In Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, they have all this uh, uh, stencil of tattooing because the, the the crusade, when the crusade went there, they start putting the yeah, on the Christians. On the Christians and on the Muslims. Exactly. Yeah. To 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 recognize themselves they, they were Christian. So they used to put the cross the Virgin Mary and blah, blah, blah on them. So when they were fine in the battlefield, they could recognize who was Christian and who was, who once, was were, once they were dead. Once and, they were dead, of course. Sure. sure, exactly. This was the main reason. That was the main reason. And another reason was to put themselves, they remember that the history that they went all the way from Europe, all the way to Jerusalem to to say Christianity and blah, blah, blah. We're talking about a very, very long period back, back in time. I mean, this sure. was, we talk about 1300, 1400. No, 1200, 1100. 1100, 1100 or 800 years ago. So yeah. tattooing was in that, in that context still relatively widely used. Yeah. You know. Over, in that context, over was, years ago, uh, right? even even there is a, uh, like in Italy, there is also a history of uh, um, workers that do. In uh, 1700, 1800, workers they used to put uh, the, the the sign of the work they do, the, the butcher, the carpenter. So what kind of uh, would the butcher have? The butcher would have a couple of knives close together, and uh, maybe. Uh, the head of a cow, uh, the, the carpenter would have uh, the, the string with the weight and uh, the, the, the compass and uh, the, the, I don't know, you call it the thing for, for putting... Uh, yeah, I mean, something uh, every everybody had his own tools on them. It was quite popular also, but there is not too much no, there's there's not really about it. No. Because it was something to hide, it was not something to show. But even until I remember, even in in, in, in Europe, uh, people had tattoos. I mean, let's say normal people that had tattoos, they wouldn't show them. I remember when tattooists uh, having a tie, a shirt and a tie. Of course, yeah. I mean, no tattoos on their hands, face, neck. No way. No way, not to do the name, right. not to do the face. Everybody were properly properly dressed. I mean, even in England, it's very common even now that the tourists have uh, an outfit that it's normal. I mean, normal, like an uh, elegant gentleman. They want to be gentlemen, <laughs> like hundred percent. Yeah, you get to do it without being labeled as. Well, then tattooing changed with the time. Of course, I mean, it went through stages. And, uh, he went with it with the changing of time. Yes. <laughs> what is the, the the biggest? I mean, tattooing obviously is not is not anywhere as it was when you got into tattooing. No. But how do you perceive tattooing now? Let's say that you would be twenty years old now. How would you perceive tattooing these days versus when you started to get interested in tattooing over fifty years ago? Uh, it's been uh, socially accepted. 
So everybody get, get a tattoo. I mean, sometimes, uh, especially when I'm in Italy, but not even in Italy, even in other places, I get very surprised and shocked. Because sometimes I see people with a tattoo and I think, what the hell, this lady got that tattoo? Well, I mean, why? I mean, I mean, everybody has a reason to have a tattoo. So I, I would understand if uh, a lady with children with pushing, uh, pushing a car, pushing a car, a little bit oversized, and, uh, but she could be, uh, uh, I don't know, a, not a teacher, but working in, you know, I mean, in the market shopping for, for vegetables and in the supermarket with, with, with the tattoo. I would understand if the tattoo had a meaning, special meaning for her, but to see her with a small tribal on the neck, to me... You don't understand. No, I don't understand. I mean, it's, as I saw it, I mean, this is my opinion. It's just a stupid fashion. <laughs> This is what it is tattooing now in some ways, or uh, I think here in Vietnam. You, I mean, I came to, to Vietnam first time in '91. Then I keep coming on and off. And off. Ten years ago, twelve years ago, uh, I was talking to my. I'm being married to a Vietnamese wife, and um, I said to my wife at the time, "Well, I didn't know what to do." And uh, why don't we open a tattoo shop in, in, here in Vietnam? But walking in the street in, in Saigon, I don't have many tattoos, as you can see. People are looking at me like I was a monster. You're crazy. Scary, you're scary, you know, scary you know, white guy. Scary white guy, exactly. In a few years' time, as you can see, yeah, I tattoos. Tattoos. I, I, I tattoos, yeah. Covered with tattoos. Yeah. Especially yeah, so, women. Also, yeah, especially women and, and very young women. Very yeah. young women. So it became popular like, like this. Within a generation. Within a generation. This is a question of uh, social uh, telephones and power, the power, the power and social media. Yeah. Because it's been socially yeah. accepted. Yes. Right. Anyway, this is my personal view of the thing, of course. Well, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, like the, the, the way I see it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not as old as you, but I mean, I can relates to many of the things you had. I mean, uh, when I started to get interested in tattooing, I mean, tattooing was, in my eyes, like magic and, and related to- Well, that, that magic, so that magic, places. unfortunately, well, I think that magic doesn't exist. It's not that strong anymore. I want to say it doesn't exist. I don't say it doesn't exist anymore, but it's not as strong anymore. Before, when we used to go to a convention, First of all, the convention was very, very small, very few people. Uh, we all we knew, each knew each other. Time. If we didn't know each other, it was a, a, a reason to know each other, to exchange and talk and uh, have a beer together. And it was a, a good time to stay together. Nowadays, you to go to a convention, 400 artists, and uh, uh, nobody knows each other. Nobody gives a shit to, to know each other. They're only there to do it because they have to finish the piece and bring it to, to, the, to the contest to have another piece of wood on, on the wall. I mean, I was joking with, uh, with uh, uh, El Rana, Simone. with Simone, eh? Simone. because uh, um, shortly, a few, few years, a couple of years ago, I got a small house in the countryside and I have uh, a fireplace. So I said to him, joking, he said, oh, very good, with all the pieces of wood that I have from uh, the, all the conventions, from, from uh, the prize, I can, uh, can throw it in the firewood <laughs> and save money for the wood. <laughs> he said, no, don't do that, don't do that. A lot of people still work very hard to collect all this. Uh, yes, uh, imagine that a few years ago when, we, when I started, we didn't make any pictures. I have very few pictures in my work. Very few. Well, also, we didn't go around with a phone camera. I mean, yeah. You needed to get like a normal. No, 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 no. At the time, it was Chris. Chris Robleski used to come in conventions, making pictures of the people and, and publishing in his book. Yeah. But, uh, 
the artist, nobody had a camera and recording what, what they were doing. Never, never. Which on one hand is sometimes like a little bit of a pity. I mean, I mean that we sure. can't really sure. witness anything that happen. Sure is a pity, sure is a pity, but uh, um, sometimes you can see uh, pictures of uh, Tattoo Club, uh, of Bristol, uh, yes. Rescue, yeah. but there was a bunch of guys, very few pictures, not so many pictures. Um, and some of them have been around for decades. They've been around uh, for decades, sure, yeah. sure. So there was somebody who was taking pictures, okay, because they were into taking pictures, but the, the artists, they didn't yeah, care for yeah. pictures. At the time, they didn't have even the time of taking pictures because the work was so, just imagine all the, the, these guys that used to work in the States with GIs during the war, before the war, Korea, Bio, Vietnam, and so on. There were people wow. in line waiting to, you know, beer in hand, getting a small tattoo and uh, jump on the plane. And that's why I had tattoo flash, flash, I mean. Right, yeah. you get inside <laughs> that one, right, board. What kind of, uh, I, I remember from some of your stories you've been telling me, like you've been traveling a lot and you've been also working sometimes in areas where you are like a lot of militaries, if I'm not wrong, once in Afghanistan. No, I've been working, no, no, in Afghanistan it was a funny story. In Afghanistan it was a funny story. I've been working, uh, yeah, I, I, being one of the first shop in Italy, uh, the most popular shop in Italy, I had all this, uh, army people from special forces from all over Italy they were coming to Rome to, to get tattoos. So uh, once I went to Cambodia a few years ago because there were some uh, Italian uh, uh, forces in uh, Cambodia. And then uh, uh, years ago, I decided to go back to, our school is to go back to Afghanistan. And uh, it was fun because uh, uh, one day I decided to go to see some of my friends there. I knew they were there. So I started going into this alley with all the uh, army things on the left and the right, uh, cars and uh, all the equipment and so on. So we done in the end of, uh, on the highway, there was a, a small tower with the uh, soldiers in the top on I mean, the uh, um, Berzaglieri, the one with the feathers. And I've been one. Yeah, I, I, I should be one. And the Carabinieri is like a military police. Yeah. It's a, a paratrooper, a special forces and paratrooper. And uh, so the guy on top started yelling, me, ah, stop, 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 with this big machine. I said, like, what's the area? Don't you see I'm a foreigner? Well, I didn't look pretty much as a foreigner because I was dressed half way as a foreigner, half way as an African. So you could be mistaken. <laughs> The other one down, he was a little bit older, more professional. It was very funny because he was certainly so strong. He said, uh, Good morning, what can I do for you? So now I would like to say hello to so and so. Uh, well, I'll check if he's in the house. He took the radio and said, uh, Who should I say? Uh, GP Rodinella. Oh, did you bring the machine with you? <laughs> the two machine, like, you got to do, yeah. do all the military there. Like. I was start laughing. I, could, I couldn't keep. I started laughing so much. I did mean, another guy. Right. But he was from the Carabinieri for the, for the battalion. He, knew, he, knew, he, he, knew, he knew me by name. Wow. And it was, it was very funny. Did you end up tattooing people there? No, I didn't bring, I didn't bring equipment at the time. No, I didn't bring equipment because. Hard lesson. I mean, it was going to Kabul in 2002 was not, uh, it was not easy. Yeah. And you wouldn't no, no go easy, there with no some easy machines. At all. No easy at all. In fact, that was yeah. 20 years ago. Everybody, when I decided to, to leave Rome to go to Kabul, just after a few months, two months after the war ended, they would look at me like, are you crazy? You're going back to Afghanistan? Or, I mean, friends of mine have been in Afghanistan for a long time. And they said, oh, why do you go back there? Yeah, I want to be back. I want to see what happened and then go back. And, in fact, I wanted to go there and open a restaurant. <laughs> in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, so why not? So where's your fascination for Afghanistan coming from? Because it was a beautiful country. In 1970, it was a fantastic country. You mean the first time in the 70s? Yeah. 
fantastic. And what, what, what was it that, that he was like to be back in the Middle Age, uh, going around, uh, especially the first night they arrived in the route. It was the first city. You could hear from the from the high, highway, from the road, you, you make a turn and you find yourself in the middle of the, of the city. But you, well, you wouldn't see the city because there was no electricity. So there were only the small uh, uh, oil uh, lamps. And you could hear this ding, 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 ding. There was the bell of the tonga, the, the horse cart. <laughs> And the day after, in the morning, you could see, look around, and see this man on the horse with the rifle, and you know, string of bullets across, <laughs> buying with the melons, uh, shopping. No and, cars around. Uh, no cars around. Few bicycles. And no, no. No pavement. No pavement. Uh, all the houses look like, uh, uh, you know, an Apache uh, pueblo. All in mud and dust, all everybody with these turbans. Incredible place, incredible. Okay, uh, imagine it's uh, incredible. one of those places which I, I would have liked. It was to incredible also for another reason because at the, at the time there was a king, but there were the six different groups Tajik, Uzbek, Pashtun, they were all living together. Uh, respecting each other, uh, everything was quiet. Everything was, you know, different habits, different uh, uh, customs. But fantastic place. I think I hope to be able to see it one time. Uh, but nowadays it's oh, completely it's changed. And sometimes I still go trying to see what happened. But uh, what, what was the last time you've been there? Two thousand. Oh, that was the last time. Right. You fancy In to fact, go back? In fact, a few months ago, a friend of mine was trying to go back and he said to me, okay, let's go back, let's go back. And before coming here, I was going, I was thinking to go back. Okay. Good thing I didn't go because he couldn't manage it. He got stopped in Pakistan anyhow. So he didn't make it back? No, I didn't make it back because there was the excuse that uh, it wasn't uh, secure to go and uh, so blah, blah, blah. So we stayed there for a couple of weeks and many tried to manage to get the, the visa to get in, but uh, he came back. So better for me because, I mean, I had the chance to stay in Peshawar, uh, it's uh, very close to Khyber Pass, it's the, the famous Khyber Pass where the British were <laughs> beaten heavily. <laughs> and uh, so that half of the population is Afghan even now. But it would be a waste of money, a waste of time. And, uh, and hopefully yeah. sometime, anytime soon. That would be nice to go back. It would be nice. I don't know if the things settle down. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't go back. I would go back. I mean, I don't care for the, 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 uh, the action, the danger. Uh, I went there. The last time I went there in 2002 to make 160 kilometers. 160 kilometers from Peshawar to Kabul, it took me 11 hours. By, by car. By car. But the roads were not the roads and the Khyber Pass and blah blah. What about so, India? You spent a lot of time in India as well. Yeah. Right? And uh, I spent a lot of time in India and Goa, I mean all over India, but especially in Goa, where I had the chance to meet uh, Felix, the great Felix Liu and the family. Philip, he was a young boy, and uh, but it was only Philip, but maybe Philip and his daughter and, and a daughter, and all the others they came afterwards because they had their two oldest ones. They were not born yet. Yeah, they were not born yet. Then how did you meet them? I meet them because, uh, of course, I went to Goa. I was flying at the moment for an airline. So I was going to go on my on my leave, and I was carrying with me my my equipment because you know it was the used to go After there. You fly, you go to Tulsa. Yeah, you go there, you fly. No, no, no. I was on vacation. That was a good combination. Yeah, it was a good combination. I was there on vacation, but I used to bring the machine, and, uh, and so uh, one day this guy came. I uh, so talking to each other. I'm from uh, 
Switzerland, I have to do Germany for three, no, Swiss German. Uh, for Italy, blah, 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 you to do, I to do. Uh, but for me, it was fun. I mean, it was, I was playing in a way because I was flying. So I had my, my salary from flying. Felix was a, a no real hippie. Right. And so he was making his living with, uh, with tattooing. So I just said, okay, you do it, you know, you better do it, uh, make your living. But I was still tattooing sometimes friends. And it was very really famous, or did you know who they were there by name, or they were just no, some we other were friends at all? We were just uh, scappati di gas. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Escape from home. Escape from home. The literary, the literal uh, uh, translation. He, he, he was uh, uh, an old, uh, an old young hippie, and uh, it was uh, the same. Uh, an hippie with short hair because I was flying for an airlines. But uh, until a few months before, I was uh, in Kabul riding horses, playing Buscashi. And, uh, so <clears throat> I was mystifying myself as a straight so You look like, yeah, so you were a hippie, but you had to look somehow. I had to, I had to look straight. Yes, I had to look straight because the airlines wouldn't accept me. Uh, but when you were flying, you already had tattoos? Yeah. Did I like it at the time? Uh, at the beginning, at the beginning, when uh, I entered for the airlines, they were called on my on my record that I had tattoos on. Uh, the, the, the guy, uh, he was very funny. He asked me, Sir, "Are you a par are you, you've been in a paratrooper?" No. Uh, you've been a criminal? Are you criminal? No. I have to do okay, so he wrote tattoo on your arm. I didn't and, make it too much of a big deal. No, I didn't make it much of a big deal. A few years after. Uh, there was a big thing on uh, on the island because they decided to give us short yeah. sleeves. So you had long sleeves at the time. You had long sleeves. So nobody would see them. Nobody. They, 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 they. So a few years after, they gave us short sleeves. So one day I went there in uh, the meeting place for the crew and there was this guy, I mean, I knew him and I've been flying with him many times. He looked at me and, uh, and it was summer. Uh, have you got your jacket with you? Oh, yeah, sure, I have it in my bag. All right, put it on, otherwise you won't come with me in those conditions. <laughs> those conditions. So I, thought, I thought he was joking. So, okay, okay, don't worry. I'm not joking. Put on your jacket, otherwise you won't come with me in those conditions. Well, I said, well, look, I signed already. If you like, to keep me. Otherwise, forget about it. Call uh, a reserve going home. So there was a big thing on, uh, of course, the captain arrived and blah, blah, blah. The captain said, well, he's in on a uniform. I don't think there's nothing wrong. And uh, so we went for the flight. I remember it was a flight to Germany. And uh, on, uh, on the flight, on, on the way back, was Rome, Frankfurt, Rome. And it was very funny because on the way back in Rome, we landed, the idiot uh, ran away. And um, the captain, the command, the captain called me and he said, oh, look, uh, Mr. Romanella, I'm sorry, but I had to sign the report to you. I said, report to me, why? Well, because the, the chief steward wrote on the steel book, steel book is a book that stays on, on the aircraft where you register all the but the inconvenience of the aircraft. Incidents. So if anything happened, yeah. an engine is not working properly, the light. He wrote in the book, a steward had tattoos on. That was a problem. That was a problem. So he said, I have to write, sign it because I'm sorry. Okay, no, don't worry. I, mean, I don't give a damn about it. It's okay. So a few months after, Keep having a note in my in my box. Ah, dear friend, dear colleague, it would be nice if you come over. We would like to talk with you. Blah 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 blah. Of course, forget about it. So one day I wasn't in, uh, in the office. Then before. Ah, good morning. What are you? Fine, thank you. Ah, could you? Um, we send you a lot of notes, but you never came. Well, I don't come. For, you give me one day off. I come. Otherwise, on my day off, I don't come. Uh, would you want to come uh, today? Yeah, sure. Ah, well, you know, blah, blah, you have to do so. Uh, so what? 
and no, it's not nice because you know you understand. This is okay. You can do something. You give me a, a dozen, a million before the euro. You give me a million for each or two I have, and I'm taking them off. I was getting the money <laughs> and quit the airline. <laughs> and, uh, well, what well, that is not possible. Oh, it's okay. It's not possible. Forget about it. Because we had this short sleeves shirt. So in the end, they decide not to give me the, 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 the money. money. The money, of course. And they decide that they change the, the book, I mean, the, the protocol book for flying. So flying crew couldn't have tattoos showing. And that was because of you. That was because of me. Alitalia decided that. <laughs> because of you, Alitalia, the national carrier in Italy. They couldn't they have, have tattoos, tattoos they could show. I mean, you could have it in the body, but not, not visible. Not visible when you were in the summertime when we had a short sleeve shirt. And I wrote this on the, after, the, after the incident. Right. And uh, a few and years after. At the forefront. <laughs> Yes, well, I, 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 flown, I flown for a few more years and then I decided it wasn't for me. I said, forget about it. Uh, ah, that's another, that's another interesting. So now comes up in my mind because you're telling me that uh, Alitalia changed the rules. And you told me also the story when you had to write some papers for the Italian health office on how to tattoo. Yeah, in a tattoo studio. And uh, because you were one of the few people to at the time, they asked you. And well, I asked, I was the one that asked, the, I mean, there are other people working at the time in Milan, Fercioni, Spadaccini, uh, but in Rome, I was the first one. So they didn't have any, there wasn't a law. So they asked me to, to make a, a statement, how tattooing supposed to be, blah, 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 blah. So I wrote it for them. Uh, to the health authorities. To the health authorities. Because they didn't have a clue. I mean, tattooing was... Uh, uh, tattooing for them was for in the prison. So I said, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> we have a proper story. Because Mr. Lombroso, the one that uh, made the research about uh, the prison tattoo, uh, there was tattooing for them. So it was unusual to think that somebody wanted to open a studio. A studio. That, was, that wasn't. That wasn't. No, it was, it was, it was not. There was not a law. Somebody thought there was a law. Somebody thought it was uh, forbidden. Uh, somebody. Nobody knew anything. It was something totally new. So you had to write the papers for them. I tried to write the papers for them, and as I explained, you know, the procedure, blah 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 blah, and then they authorized me to to open the shop. All right. And but then people were but the people which had to open the shops after you. They had to study the paper, do an exam or something. Or well, they were lucky. Them. They were lucky because uh, then after after Rome and after Milan and Bologna, Marco Pisa. Marco Pisa was uh, the first official shop three months before me in, in Rome. Um, after Bologna and Rome, in Milano, the two tattoos in Milano, they were tattooing from a long time, the same, 70s. But they were doing another job. So... Uh, and I think this was quite common back then. It, yeah. right? like most tattooers, because it was not... A primary because company. nobody could think that tattooing could be a profession. Uh, who, so, who, was the, who was the first one who really understood in Italy that that could be like a long-term proper profession or a viable profession. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you because you see, uh, in, in, in the 70s, um, I made my first tattoo in India, 1970, by hand on, uh, on a friend. Uh, and then I completed uh, for- What did you use to tattoo? Uh, was, uh, I went over an old home she okay. had an old home done in Kathmandu. It, was, it wasn't done in a way. Hey, you detached it. And I detached it with, with uh, matches and a uh, bunch of needles and some ink. But you had no previous experience. So no, I, I, I can do better than that. 
Even I remember how they did it with me with the funny machine, and I tried to do it with the same way, with some matches stick together with thread and some needles sticking out. Did that work? It did work. I mean, I touched up the own sign that she had on, uh, on, uh, on the art, so nobody knew anything about it. Did she know that was your first tattoo that you were making? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. She knew. And that tattooing was not popular. Then Marco bought his machine from Amsterdam, uh, from Anki, from Anki Panki somehow. Uh, Gian Maurizio got his machine from Germany somehow. I got my first proper machine from, from England somehow. While I was flying, I was buying these machines and things like that. But nobody knew anything. We were, it was everything new. I mean, for us, tattooing in Italy at the time was a jail machine, a jail work by hand. Few people had who was traveling, uh, was going to the, somebody that went before to England, to the United States, had a, a tattoo. But even then, I mean, it was 1970, it was pretty. Even in other countries, it was not so popular. No, it was still, uh, I mean, at least in Europe. I mean, in Europe, yeah. in Europe I remember in Europe, um, there was a shop in, uh, uh, went to uh, Paris, there was Bruno mm -hmm. in uh, Pigalle. And I'm playing at Tattoo Peter. Tattoo Peter uh, in Amsterdam. Before, in Amsterdam, Tattoo Peter. Uh, in London, there were, Couple of shops, but it was not difficult, not, not easy to find. Not easy to find. And uh, what else? Ah, in Denmark, that wallet, that wallet. In Northern Europe, was in easier. Germany. Germany had a couple. In Germany, uh -huh. in Germany, yes. In uh, Berlin, Frankfurt, there were people to do it. Well, it was not so popular because Patumi at the time, in the 70s, was still, uh, uh, I remember in Hamburg, uh, uh, in Niehaven, it was uh, very, was very, very underground, very underground, not, uh, not very popular. Well, you mentioned before, like in Italy, uh, you guys attended the first event ever. Yeah, uh, Zebra. Do, do, do you remember any other tattoo convention outside of Italy while you've been at uh, in those early days? I remember the early days. I remember we went one in, uh, in Switzerland. In uh, the, uh, uh, it was a small, very small convention in Switzerland. Uh, and then I. No, in Sangal. 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 It was the first one in Sangal. When I met young Ten Ten. Oh, you met Ten Ten. Ten Ten. There he was a young boy who looked like a Ten Ten. Yes. In Sangal. What, what year was it? Oh, my gosh, I can't remember. More or less. More or less. Seventies. Uh, Seven. I tell you, uh, eighty-five, uh, eighty-six, probably. Eighty-six. Eighty-six. Like I said that was after the. After Rome. After Rome. Yeah. All right. 86 or 87. Yeah. And it was a very small convention. San Gallo and Tabuco. San Gallo and Tabuco. Do you remember any other people there from that? Mm, no, really. I mean, uh, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't remember who was there. There was some uh, Swiss Tadwis, some German Tadwis, but I don't remember. And then I remember in the, in the beginning of the ADA, 90s in England, um, a Lionel Teacher mm. convention, and then yeah. uh, uh, he made he made a few in uh, some some. Uh, it was it must have been 1986, I think, because I had the book already. I made the book already, as you know, and there was also another book at the time by a German photographer that was there in the convention. But it was a very, very small, uh, very, very small, small, very small, all British tattoos. I, like, uh, I heard when I was a kid, a lot like Ian of Reading, that it was- Before, that before. Was before. Jan of Reading came, Jan 
and uh, uh, Ian, uh, what's his name? Uh, John, 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 oh my God, I'm getting old. Um, and all the other guys, they made the convention, so danced the book. Right? Right. They came afterwards. Um, uh, Lionel was making a convention from the, from the British Association. He was the president of uh, the British Association. He was making magazine and all before. And uh, even at the end, uh, uh, national convention. Ah, the national the convention. National convention. Do some of them, right? Yeah, I went one, one, in one the US, and they had the chance to meet uh, uh, many uh, history guys. Who, yeah. like, who, who was the main one that you can that you remember? For Roger. For Roger. Uh, yeah. And it was very funny because there was also Mike Malone yeah. over there, and it was funny because. Uh, when we were before in Rome, I was talking to Ed Hardy, and he said that this son that I have on my arm, I made it in Kathmandu, in the street. Uh, and then when I was in, uh, in New York in uh, 1970, I think, yeah, I went into this studio in the house. There was this guy making tattoo, I didn't know him. It was my father. It was, was illegal. It was illegal in New York. Yeah, it was illegal. And uh, there was this guy tattooing, so I wanted to put colors because he didn't have any colors, and it was my pantaloon. So I put all the colors uh, yellow, orange, and blah, 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 on my hat. Which and is all gone. It's all gone. Yeah, in fact, years after, I put this dragon in. Uh, uh, we can uh, show it away, like. Yeah. The so sun. Here was supposed to be the color. Yeah. Here's supposed to be the color. Mike Malone put many years ago, and I put this dragon in uh, Hong Kong that was going through the sun that had colors at the time. And now the dragon is split in two. Yeah, now the dragon is split in two. So I went to, I said to Ed the, the story of the, the color, the color were there anymore. So when we were in this uh, New Orleans convention, uh, Mike was there, and she come, 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 let's go and see him. Look, 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 look what the hell you did. Uh, Mike looked at me like, who are you? <laughs> like, you put colors on this in New York in 1970. <laughs> he was laughing. <laughs> he was a nice guy. And, uh, very funny guy. Very funny. He was still... He was a national, national convention. And there were what was the vibe of, over there? Like that? Oh, it's completely different from the conventions that we had in, in Europe. Uh, there was... Uh, a cocktail the day before, only for members. And, uh, the, I heard everybody very formal, very, in a suit, very nice to dress Sorry. with the night with tuxedo. Said uh, said probably with with with, with uh, pink and paillette and things, but I mean everybody was Still very formal, very 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 everything was top number one, very very nice. And you mean at one time? In, uh, I went there one time we had my, with Marco Leone, uh, who was there too, and uh, and somebody from uh, Felix wasn't there, Felix Liu, but I remember the daughter was there. I don't know if Philip was there. I can't remember. I mean, somebody from the family. Somebody from the family, family, new family was there. And uh, it was very nice. It was uh, New Orleans. Uh, any other people from Italy? No. Only you, only you, Mark. Was this by invitation? Well, we were, we were, a, we were members of uh, Nation. Well, that okay. That's why you could go. Otherwise, so we could go. it was only for, for, for members. Right. I mean, the, the public was not members, of course. I mean, they could go inside and see. But the, the one that could tattoo do or to be there, they were only for members. And I went there not to tattoo, but to uh, sell my book. Promote the book, the, the Lazina no, no, no. And I brought all this, a bunch of all these flashes that I had for me, because I had a pile of uh, flashes that I put in India, everywhere, collecting everywhere I could, I find. And so that's like a yeah, pile as much as possible. Much as possible. And I sold a lot to Jonathan Shaw, to, to, to other guys. Uh, Jonathan Shaw, by the way, it, it was really another. I met, yeah, I, met yeah, Jonathan, yeah. I met Jonathan, I met Jonathan Shaw by chance 
in a, in a bar one night. We were sitting uh, next to each other. We were drinking. Blah, blah, in what? New York or something? Or, uh, in or... uh, who was that? It was nineteen eighty six. Yeah, nineteen eighty six. And so we were talking uh, more or less. Blah 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 blah. And he came out. He knew friends. He knew Marco Pisa. He knew other Marco Leone. He knew other friends. So we started talking. And then we met again in Amsterdam. After the convention, blah 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 blah, and I'm you being show at this uh, tattoo on, on, on the front, right? No, Marco Leone had a tattoo on the front. I, I don't know if he's younger than now. As Marco Leone had, and then Marco Leone had uh, uh, two wings. I always, I always confuse those people. Because when they were young, they looked like Simi, right? Marco Leone had two wings on his forehead that he made because he didn't oh, want to go. Was uh, John no. Show. No, he didn't want to go in the service, in the act. <laughs> so he put this big eagle, two wings on his uh, on his forehead. And he went to the to the day for, for, for the check, for the health check to go in the service. They look at him and he said, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. get out of here. <laughs> so Marco, for many years, Marco went around with the, with the band Ah, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Because all he had hair in front of his uh, forehead. And so one day he came uh, and said, Oh, I'm removing my, my wings on my forehead. How you do it? By laser in Amsterdam. Why? Well, I'm getting bold, so I better remove it. <laughs> you cannot cover them Marco, anymore. Marco is a great guy. <laughs> Marco Leone is a great guy. Yeah, I was, I was, I was. You know, like I always, I always been, I wasn't sure if it was like Marco, Jonas, no, because no, when no. they were younger, it's Marco. It was Marco. Because they worked together like, in Brazil. I was looking at it like, doesn't happen. So, you know, it's, you they were, they were working together in Brazil. Yes, Marco yeah. had this, uh, I met Marco in India on his way to Brazil. And uh -huh. he had this, um, he had this machine for tattooing. I mean, his first machine was a machine for tattooing, uh, Pigs and uh, cows, and it's like a machine. It's the same as the first machine. He was his first machine. To do animals. Yeah. I mean, at the time, it was easy, the time. It was <laughs> easy to find. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. And, yes. Then he went to, to, uh, to Brazil and he met another Italian guy that was working in, the, in Brazil from Bologna, let's say, in Ciccio, Ciccio Panzacchia. Oh. It was another. One of the first tattoos needed, but he was working mainly in Brazil. Yeah, 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 yeah. There were a bunch of guys from Bologna all going to Brazil. It was a, a good life, a good life. I think, and then uh, uh, even Marco Pisa went to Brazil many times. Marco Pisa, and then we also have uh, and Laura Polini also, which more, but this was after Polini after. Came after. A lot of time. They are, yeah, let's say they are all of them are a second, second, third generation of Italian tattooists. Because the first, first generation of Italian tattooists, Mino Spadaccini, Maurizio Faccioni, Marco Pisa, me, uh, where else? Tom Tattoo. Uh, Tom Tattoo. Uh, more or less your age. Or not? No, it's much younger. How much younger? No. Yeah, all much younger. Marco Leone and Marco Pisa, we had almost, almost the same age. Hmm. I'm, I'm old, a uh, few years older. Yeah, almost. Well, all the others, they came. For so four tattoo artists, basically. Or five. They be good. We, we were four or five, yes. Four, four or five. <laughs> and now, how many do you have in Italy? <laughs> tattoo artists. Anybody knows? That's that's a question I'm really trying to find an no, answer no. to. Well, you see, the thing is that uh, in uh, 19, 2000, I think 2001, 2002, I don't remember exactly, uh, in Italy they decided to make a, a law that uh, tattoos had to go to school mm. to have a, a license. To be a what do you think about it? I stopped the doing after because after you when when they decide that you had to go to do 
uh, training. I don't know, it was 60 hours. It was much bullshit, of course. It was not a, a proper training. It was just a piece of paper that you had to hang on your wall. <clears throat> but this was still for the health? It was department. for the health department. It was, it was to, 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 to get money out of it because we were so many. So decide that we had to get a license, an official piece of paper. So when I decided that we had to make the official paper, I said, okay, thank you very much. I'm the spirit over. of the two I'm over. It's gone. It's gone. And I decided to, to stop. For, for many years, I was completely out of the world of the Yeah, this was uh, my, my experience too. I mean, I, to give a little bit of context, I mean, I've been hearing about the name GP since I was basically a kid uh, because he tattooed the only person in my life, in my family that I had a tattoo. And his name, I heard many times, plus some other people, plus I saw him in mag magazines in the late 80s. I never met him in real life, even though we came from the same city. And then once I got a little bit more professional into tattooing in the last 10, 12 years, uh, I thought, you know, it didn't really exist. I thought it didn't exist, you know, because it was always away. You always oh, okay. yeah, For many years I've been away. I've been doing other things completely different. And, uh, for a short while after they made this law um, that uh, you need a certificate or a license or whatever, I was still flying from back and forth from, from East, from Thailand, to, to Rome uh, once a month for, for, for the week, because I had to finish all the, the work that I had to finish. So there was a lot of people that were having- uh, Still wanted to have work yeah. from you. No, no, they had big piece that had to be finished. Right. Uh, so I was flying once a month for the week, a few days, finishing what I had to finish, then flying back again to, to Asia. And then I've been doing completely different things. And for many years, I completely disappeared from, from the world uh, of tattooing. I didn't want to know nothing because for me it was, I mean, it was becoming a different world. Yes. Uh, the school, the, the, the certificate, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the, the way- uh, you, you perceived tattooing. Yeah. You had to get it was, it was another thing. And then one day you reappeared because one day I one day one day I reappeared. Wow, I reappeared because Simone and Rana, the famous Simone and Rana, uh, one day said to me, "Ah, come on, now, let's go come to the convention." Blah, blah. You know, he know. convinced you to get back into the game. He convinced me to more or less to come back to the game to start the game, the conventions, blah 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 blah. But you have to consider that I couldn't do it because in Italy to, to tattoo, you must have a certificate. I mean, you have to go to a school, a school, right? <laughs> school and get an exam and blah, blah. And then they give you a piece of paper and you stick up in your, on your wall and um, you are entitled you to got tattoo. tattoo. So now I don't know how many thousand tattoo artists that are so officially we should be an illegal tattoo in Italy now. I'm still illegal tattoo <laughs> in Italy. Legal. I think that me, me, Marco Pisa and Marco Leoni we are still illegal. But is it not some kind of honoris causa you know people no. you know for example like in Japan you know, you gotta be a doctor to tattooing. I mean, this this regulation has been on and yeah. off for the last few years. Uh, but the people which have been there like forever, like Yoshi and a few others, they somehow still allow. Well, well I don't know. I never, I never it. get interested in it. You know, I don't, uh, I don't care. Uh, I don't say I don't want to give a shit, but I don't care about it. You know? I don't really care. Uh, I've done my job, uh, I still do it. No, what I'm saying is like in Italy, they don't have like a similar regulation that if you no. for over well, 40 years, you know, you, see, you still problem, need a piece of paper to recognize you can do what In Italy, probably, I mean, they made it, I mean, they made the regulation because they, they realized that there were so many, there was a, a, a new thing coming up. And you know, my country, I'm sorry to say, 
the government and the, 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 the mayors of the city and all the establishment, uh, as soon as they can get money somewhere, they, they jump in it. Yeah, probably almost That's everywhere. So they decided years ago, quite a few years ago, that uh, the people that uh, were tattooing, they had to go to school and do a training. It was absolutely nothing. But they had to go do a training for a few weeks, and, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, so I didn't agree with this because for me, the doing was a different story, a different thing. And uh, so I said, okay, That's raise it. up my hand, you do it, I don't care. Uh, so they went on and on. And now I think they need to be probably there are some more than, I don't know how many thousand certified tattoos in the country. Somebody's working, somebody's not working. I mean, and on a legal level, they're entitled to tattoo and you don't. Exactly. On, on when I, I, when I work level. when I work in Italy, officially I'm still in Italy. Well, that's a beautiful thing. So I'm, a little, a bit, a little bit. I, I'm still in legal. I mean, so when I go to conventions, I go there, they invite me to go to, I very rarely go to conventions now. Which one is the next one you go? Uh, probably Amsterdam. Amsterdam to do convention. Yeah. September. September. But when I'm in Italy, I'm, uh, uh, I don't, I don't even keep too much in touch with the, this convention thing. So but they invited me recently to, to go to some web. Uh, I don't know. And, uh, I don't fit myself anymore into this, uh, this trade in a way, into, to this world, because it's too different from uh, from my world uh, even the way of tattooing the way of the, what they have on all this uh, i don't know not my world anymore i just do it for pleasure because i like to do it but well, i'm not that much into it sure nowadays nowadays there is money in it not so much as before because before we were few so, was so there was money. Money. Very easy to do money. Now, uh, even the, the money you went down, but it's not a question of money. It's a question that is not, it's not my world anymore. It's different. Okay. Before we went, things, things change. When we were in a convention, we were all friends. We all meet each other after the convention, all drinking each other, eating, having fun. Nowadays, you go to a convention, you don't know anybody. Everybody is in, is in his stand, looking the others. Is working more than me, and uh, not my way. Uh, not I remember, my way. like even uh, Marco Leone was saying. I mean, he organizes commercial. Yeah. He's been doing for a long time. He told me, "Yeah, I go to a commercial. I don't know anyone. <laughs> He's the organizer. Has been and has been around uh, like forever, like you. It's uh, so now to go to, to go to a convention sometime in, in Italy is a uh, ah master. Can we make a picture together? I'm not a master of anybody. You know? Okay, let's make a picture together. What for? How about a two? From you? Oh, yeah. I mean, and that be begging for a two as well. In the last few years, <laughs> in the last few years, I mean, make uh, uh, spirals because my, my, my uh, rondinella, in, uh, if you translate it in, uh, Italian. in Italian from to English, it's a spiral. Oh, so now it's a signature. It's a spiral. I mean, maybe I don't know how many. In the last few years, oh, you make me uh, a spiral. Okay. It's a nice tattoo. It's a classic. Uh, it's a classic. It's a classic, classic design. Sure. Yeah, it's a classic design. You like it that the name? If it would have been called GP the Dragon, then you probably have a little <laughs> dragon. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, well, I still um, enjoy. I still enjoy sometimes tattooing because I enjoy doing it. Sometimes I don't enjoy it because they ask me some such a stupid thing. I can't believe, I can't understand. So when I ask you something stupid, do you still like to do it or you don't? Well, I do it because the few times that I work, I do it because it, it's my work. It's so a job. They, it's my job. Uh, they pay me and I have to do it and I have to do it right. But, uh, it's out of my mind to do the, the, the what's the sign that looks like an eight. And the, and then there is now there is a fashion. It's an incredible fashion. Everybody goes for the same thing. I don't know why. 
to do it with simulation. I mean, once years ago, if a do it person, you could read it. You can read a tattooed person, a tattooed woman, or a tattooed man, because he had on himself his story, yes. who he was. Nowadays, it's impossible because everybody is having more or less the same style, the same uh, image, the same uh, the same tattoo. So I can, uh, there was a, a lady a few years ago in a convention in uh, Sardinia, uh, Martha. I said, Martha, how are you doing? I'm boring. I have to do another um, uh, an image of uh, one a Greek, portrait, uh, uh, a portrait of a Greek. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, it's yeah. the seventh. It's the seventh that I make. I'm so boring because everybody went for this old man with his beard and his hair. You know, oh yeah, like the Greek very, mythologic, uh, mythologic, uh, mythologic uh, hero. And she's very good. At it. It is the same, and I'm so boring. It's the same that I make. Well, if you make something really well as a tattooer, then some other people will probably ask for it. You know, if they see a cool tattoo, they're like, hey, I want to have something like that. You know, yeah, it's, I mean, something should be personal. Very personal. In the old days, it was more personal. I mean, tattoo, it has to remind you something. I mean, each tattoo I have on me, it reminds me somebody or a place, a story, a moment in your life, a moment in my life, which was unique. Sure, sure. I would never get a tattoo just to get a tattoo, like I do sometimes. <laughs> no, I would never do. I would never do. Uh, each one of these, it's, it's, it's a moment. It's a story. It's, it's which, a which one is uh, the tattoo you have in your body, which you are the most Found on or all of them, all of them, yeah, all. because each one is a moment of your life. Cool, that's 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 a great that's a great thing. I mean, there may, but probably there are a couple of them, they are not a moment of the life, but it's the, the moment I met somebody uh, in my life that was, uh, example, the one that I have here, it's not a moment of my life. In a way, it's a moment of my life because it was done during the the the, the, Lazio and Lazio, the, mm -hmm. the meeting we had in Rome. But it was done by uh, a guy that is always in my heart, Pinky Yan. There is uh, Pinky Yan is a is a master of uh, Chinese tattooing. So I have it. That was the guy from uh, from uh, well, he, he was working in Hong Kong for oh, a long right. time, and then he was working in. Uh, in America for, for for a long time to Pinky Yan. Pink flashes uh, all over the world, these flashes. Uh, I think I met I met him once only, I think. Uh, it's one of one of the tattooists of Hong Kong that has been putting his hands on uh, on hundreds and hundreds of GIs during the, the Vietnam War. Uh, yeah. Because they were going during the Vietnam War, they were going uh, uh, all over uh, all over the world, in Japan and uh, China, Hong Kong, or, uh, in Rome, um, for, for for vacation. After the uh, uh, duty shift and duty, they were going on vacation, and uh, so they were getting probably a tattoo here and there. And he's been tattooing hundreds and hundreds of GIs from the Vietnam, from the Vietnam War. And is the guy still alive? No, no, he died. He, he, he died three years. Ago. He died a few years ago. He, he probably has his own story, though. I mean, uh, he, you know, he not, probably has been tattooing in a nice. He's not very, he's not very known. Um, Head Hardy was a very good friend with him, uh, but he's not very known in the world of tattooing because these Chinese uh, tattooists, they were, you know, very few at the time. Very bro. few at the time. Uh, Ricky Low and a few other. From uh, from Dragon uh, Dragon Studio, and a few years ago, I went to with Kubo, mm. uh, as a, the owner of the tattoo museum, around. the beautiful tattoo beautiful museum tattoo. in Rome. Oh, visit it if you can. Very very nice. We went to France to get uh, a part of the collection of uh, <clears throat> Chris Chris Robleski. Mm -hmm. 
that is uh, an English photographer, and he made quite a few publication, uh, uh, photograph publication years back. And now he stopped already to, to do this job. I mean, it's not anymore in the tattoo world. And he had this, he had in his house a big collection from uh, um, Hong Kong a tattoo shop. So together with uh, Kubo, uh, we went to, to France, in his house in France, to get the collection that now is in, is in Rome. Part is in Rome, part is in, uh, in Amsterdam. But... Is, it, is it on display now? In Rome is on display, yeah. And in Amsterdam, I don't know if uh, they put it on display or not. I don't know. So we went to get, to get uh, this large collection from the Chinese, from a Chinese uh, artist. But there were very few. I mean, only at the time going to Hong Kong where, where the GIs uh, during the Vietnam yeah, War. Yeah. Was, uh, because traveling at the time was not so easy. I mean, it was expensive. It was, uh, even even when, when I went to India the first time, I went to India overland. My car. Yeah, over like a car, a train, no, no fly. I went to overland quite a few times. That's a trip from Italy uh, to India. It was a long car. way. Yeah, how, was how long did you take the first time? 43 days. <laughs> That's a road trip. Yes, it was a road trip. 43 days. That's a road trip. Yeah, it was nice stopping here and there, Istanbul, Tehran, Ashad. Kabul, Eras, Tower Pindi, you know, slowly, slowly, Kathmandu. Kazip is my, my travel hero. I mean, uh, to me, uh, yeah. he embodies the combination between a traveler and a tattooer and the exotic life of a tattooer. Well, if I hear the way stories. In the old days, in the old days, uh, we used to go around and uh, it was nice to be around, to meet people, to, to see different things. Tattooing in Kathmandu, tattooing in uh, this three tattoos that I have, I made it in Kathmandu in 1970, in the street. That's what With <laughs> hygienical situation, I won't describe it. <laughs> Absolutely, I won't describe it. But then again, I mean, you know, like it's, it's all kind of experiences which are pretty much unique. I mean, it's hard to... So, do anything like this. This, this bird, you didn't get any hepatitis on the street, stuff like this. Like. Well, I was bloody lucky. Very lucky. Very. This, this bird here, I got it in the red light district of Bombay. On the street? On the street. I mean, more or less on the street. Are you like a street? I mean, street? No, no, no. It was not, it's not proper on the street. It was a kind of uh, army and navy. Tattoo parlor. I was a little tattoo shop. It was a little tattoo in shop Bombay. in Bombay. It was just uh, outside. Uh, in the red district of Bombay. In the red district of Bombay, just outside a dentist. Imagine. Dentist of Imagine. There was this guy having a little space uh, outside. In Bombay, many years ago, there was a, a tattoo artist outside at the entrance of uh, a public toilet, <laughs> hanging his, his uh, she sheets outside a public toilet. I mean, tattooing in India was dramatic. It was really dramatic. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> 1970, 71, 72. Before, before, before I did some pictures of, uh, of a guy that he showed me one of my first Indian machines in Goa. Soma. Yeah. Uh, Soma is well known because even uh, Felix and Philip he, he remade some designs yeah. of Soma. So it was this guy in, uh, in Goa, uh, on the floor in Goa with an umbrella. He was practically blind and he was tattooing and he was blind. But he knew how to do a tattoo even if he was almost blind. <laughs> How, how did he do it? Uh, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. This is one of the stories. That... And I remember he showed me, 
he, he showed me uh, his, uh, his box with a couple of his machines. Now these boxes are in the Marco Pisa collection. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful object with batteries inside. I think you should somehow open your little museum of collectibles. From I don't the have, I don't have anymore, nothing, because in the old days, there was not this crazy thing for collecting stuff. So I remember when I came back from India, I had two huge uh, steel trunks full of uh, glasses. Of the, uh, I gave it away to friends. Uh, I sold part of it to friends, to other tattooists uh, in Amsterdam and in uh, London. Uh, because, I mean, at the time, they didn't have any value. No. More or less, you know, because there was not this craze for collecting uh, stuff. So I have things spread all over Australia, United States, France, Europe, Japan. Well, at least now anyone can benefit from it. Sure. Yeah. It's sure. Not only in your hands, but no, no, it's not in my hands. By the way, something I don't really like is that many of these things that are in those collections, there is not a thanks to a credit for you. A credit, because anytime I give, I do something, I give credit to other people. Of course. But I have to say, and I'm sorry for it, that uh, there is this stupid attitude when you have it in your collection, it's like yours. It's yours because if you find it, it's yours. If somebody gave it to you, you should say thanks to. I mean, that's I my that's, that's my attitude. Yes, well, that's fair. That's common sense too. You know, that's my attitude. Anytime I go around, like in, in Burma, or, or recently I went to Burma, I bought things and I gave it to Mark or uh, I went to uh, some other guy. The one that I gave to you, the little bit. Yes, I'm going for more. Yeah. You know, but yeah. my my attitude is when I get something from somebody is to give. Uh, uh, recognition to them, thanks to. Yeah. He find it, I have it, it's mine, but he found it. Yeah. But now there is very, very little recognition. And then it's fucks me up. I don't like it. No, I understand it. I mean, and, yeah. Probably in the old days, it was a little bit more. Um, yeah. yeah, the topic was a little bit more like a, a tight family. Yes. A little bit more. Uh, nowadays, nobody cares, and that's not very nice. But it's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I think it's uh, in the. It's a situation where you have too much of everything, then maybe people tend to lose focus on what really matters. Maybe it's. Uh, um, well, you see, for a few things, I'm. And many more than for few other things. I'm an old fashioned guy. Old fashioned. Old fashioned. Old fashioned. Old fashioned. Old fashioned. No, because I'm not an old school, because I've never been doing old school tattooing. Right. But I'm old fashioned. Um, uh, even for, I mean, I'm not that young anymore. But um, I think that uh, people should be more, uh, more careful about this, you know? Well, some respect, uh, I mean, you know, respect, be, exactly. Respect for uh, respect. In the old days, in the old days, there was more respect. I remember in England sometime, uh, in the old, this old, old English guy, they were not fighting, but arguing uh, between them because they had, pro ah, no, you did this, no, yeah. especially after a few days, of course. But there was more, more respect for each other. Nowadays, there is more. Uh, To be seen, selfishness, self self exactly. And respect is forgotten. I mean, uh, I see a lot of time my things on books on uh, on, on display, uh, but no credits, no credit. And this is well, I don't know. I mean, normally, when I do something, and I have something from somebody. I give credit because I think it's uh, it's fair to do it. Uh, is the changing of times. 
Yeah, it's a little bit of ethics which uh, is getting lost. But I'm well, gonna... ethics is getting lost in many things. In the old days, there was a big sign in the shops: no face, no hands, no political things, no uh, blah blah blah. This is completely over. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, I don't think we see that in the shops anymore. Right. Well, but you see, tattooing is, as far as I see, the tattooing has been going through stages. Uh, very popular, then it disappeared, then it got popular again, yes, it yep. again, blah, 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 blah. I hope that it, this is not going to happen again because uh, all this uh, uh, genius that put things on the face, and, uh, and I don't know what I'm going to do if something happens. There is a moment in history that uh, tattooing is going to be not so popular. You're going to get less popular, and then all these people are like, oh, shit. Yeah. Putting tattoos, a uh, lots of tattoos on his face, or you are a, a freak that works in the circus. Yeah, well, there's many of them. Or you are very rich, that you don't have to bother for the rest of your life. But once you cover your face with tattoos, and your hands, and all your body, and then you complain that you don't find a job, what the hell are you going to do? That's a problem. All right, but I'm a tattooist. Okay, but if you close your hand in, uh, in the car, you oh, lose an eye, or no, no, you, you, now, you, you, you break your hand, break your hand in, in, in the car, you close the car door, and your hand is inside. You can use your hand anymore. What do you do? If you got completely covered, I don't know. I'm probably I'm a, in a way. I'm do something. I was into doing. Maybe not an artist, but maybe if you can do it, if, if you know how to do it. Probably in a way, I'm an old-fashioned guy. In a way, well, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I don't care. I don't care. I'm, that's fine for me. That's fine for me. No way. But still, is uh, an incredible incredible thing i mean tattooing if you can imagine it you find that in in italy a few years ago they found this uh, mummy from uh, in the, of, from the border between italy and, uh, and switzerland the three said it was switzerland it was italian and this mummy is incredible because uh, he has tattoos and they discovered that the spots and the small sign that he has is where he had arthritis. Yes. So the so that cool. means that over three thousand years ago. I'm sorry, I'm running out of battery. <laughs> I gotta just give me one sec. I gotta put some battery on. Sorry, guys. Oh. So going back to Ozzy, the where where he, uh, where he had arthritis and he put tattoos on his point where he had the arthritis. So it was like a, a kind of a medical. So it is. Yes, I, I heard a story. I was, yeah. I'm quite familiar with that. And uh, so, you know, this also comes down to the fact that in many cultures, tattooing was yeah. related to health and medical. Yeah, shamanic, shamanic, shamanic way. Which, which was probably the same in several if Imagine that the, 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 the mummy that you find in uh, Altar in Russia. Of this uh, sheet, a uh, sheet and uh, a warrior with all these tattoos that he was buried under the, 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 the eyes. They find it. I mean, tattooing has an incredible uh, history. Incredible history. Yeah, right now I think it's just another moment in time where I have this phase of extreme boom of tattooing. It is an extreme uh, boom of tattooing because it's an extreme boom of uh, showing off. 
Yes, in a way. In a way, yeah. I mean, and, right now. And, and, is... and that we became uh, social accepted. That Before, makes a big difference. years ago, it was not social accepted. Uh -huh. Because I remember in, in, in the 70s, uh, having a tattoo, the people were looking at you, I mean, especially in Italy, it was only for convicts, it was not for regular people. Right. Even when I was just a kid, I mean, which is not so long ago, I didn't know anyone with tattoos. Exactly. They were, they were not really even in wrong. even in, in, in the states, uh, where tattooing is very popular, in the old days, tattooing was for 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 uh, bikers, for few for a few people, criminals, for uh, army men, lower class army men, and, uh, circus people, people that works in the circus for freaks, and I mean, it was not. So not for, for the regular folks. Not for the regular folks. Not, not at all. Not at all. This is how much the word shapes. Uh, <laughs> very Again. good. The word, very good. The word is changing, but sometimes it's changing. Probably, probably a little bit too much. I mean, yes. Like in the old days, it, it was nice because uh, the doing was popular, but it was very personal. Because I remember in the 70s, the first time I saw a lady with his tie and his jacket, he was like a regular guy. You could only see that he had to do because a small piece came out from his, his shirt. Just a small piece came from his shirt. All the guys that I met in England when we were going to England in the, first, in the beginning of the conventions, they all had long sleeves. I mean, you couldn't see nothing. Lionel Titian, for example. Lionel could be a cleric. In an office, uh, never imagined. Few of them, uh, they were bikers, so you could show that they had tattoos on. Uh, even in Amsterdam, in Amsterdam, in Copenhagen in the old days, all these old men, shirt, normally dressed. Yes. And well, there was still was a very, he was a kind of a person. Sure, for the bikers, for, for other guys, it was, uh, was not a show off, it was a way of life. Because all these Los Angeles guys, I mean, they have tattoos because they have tattoos, they don't wear a, a, Yeah, they belong shirt. to a certain kind of community. Yeah, they, they, they don't wear a shirt and a towel. Not a lot. <clears throat> not a lot, so it's okay. But it was very, very easy in Japan, all the Yakuza, I mean, yeah. shirt and a towel, to this day. To this day, when I was in Japan, I mean, you wouldn't see. I remember in Japan, I was going to. Uh, I had a store in Japan. I had a girlfriend that was uh, arrested, the stupid idiot. And so I went to Japan for two months to time to take her out from jail, blah, blah, blah. Long story. And uh, I was going to the prison every day to, to talk with her. Because they in Japan, you can go every day if you want to. To talk with the with the prisoner, and it was fun. And there was all these yakuza guys standing there, waiting for the wives to come back from uh, from the parlory, from having a conversation with the husband. And all of them, I could see from the shirt that a different color, the white shirt, a little bit dark <laughs> yeah. inside, and with this all uh, oyabu, and all in white, uh, with glasses. Uh, it was, it was very funny, but nobody could see them because even for Yakuza, it was uh, covered completely. Nobody know. And you have to keep like a proper appearance. Yeah, proper appearance. Yeah. And, you know, nowadays is more uh, bad, bad. <laughs> <laughs> different times. Different times. Okay. Different times. Different time. I, I hope they won't regret it. Yes. I hope they won't regret it. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, like. Most people get in tattoos, you know, like they're supposed to be adults, you know, they should be responsible for their actions. The problem is that most people get in tattoos today, they're not adults. Uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. And why, and why, why, it became, why it became, unfortunately, uh, in a way, kind of a fashion, even younger ones are getting used to it, or getting near to it, and they do it in the wrong way. Well, they're growing up with that. I mean, they almost don't yeah. know anything else. I mean, if you are like 15 years old now, that, that's almost all you know. You haven't seen another reality. So, yeah, for them, it's absolutely normal. Like, for them, it's absolutely yeah. normal. But 
for me, it's not normal to get a tattoo on the face. No, no. I mean, it's because it's, it's not normal because anymore. society, a large part of the society, is still very conservative. Sure. It's very still very conservative. Until a few years ago, if you had a tattoo that could show, you couldn't work in a bank, you couldn't go work in a, for an island, you couldn't work for, 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 for many things. No way. Well, yeah, but I mean, now even in, in, in as far as I can see, like in, in most professions, tattooing, I mean, whatever you're like a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, like an engineer or yeah, something. Yeah, but normally, kind of normally they, they, they tattoo, they, they conceal their tattoos. They conceal. I mean, I've been tattooing doctors. Okay? Yeah, or yourself, so. Sure. Yeah. But they were so intelligent not to put a tattoo on the face. Right. Well, yeah, that's a different Because there are some, some uh, professions where they're still very concerned. Very concerned. Well, anyone feels in public, and especially at a certain level. Should be. I mean, public is, is a different story. Is this sort of fact? I don't know. At least are... I'm talking. I'm talking for for Italy. Okay, uh, we are a little bit more conservative. Um, other countries, England, uh, Holland, uh, United States, are a little bit more free. A little bit more. Uh, yeah, they're, they're more free. There are barriers over there too. But I mean, it's uh, uh, yeah. The, 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 for some jobs, is is these days, you know. It's it's probably okay. Well, we we have we have a moral in, in my country. We have a moral in still still today. If there is some of them look at you like, you know, in the old days it was impossible. The old days, when I was, I remember when I had my first tattoo. It was the Om sign, the sun, and another this other sign in Kathmandu. I went back to Rome. People that would look at me like, uh, oh my God. What did he do to yourself? What did he do to yourself? Yeah, all the way to Kathmandu. And when I went to, when I went to, to, to my interview for the airlines, uh, the guy, that was the doctor that was doing the, the medical check, he asked me, are you been in a paratrooper? No. Ah, have you been in jail? No. So why do you have tattoos? And I didn't have that much, yeah? I had almost nothing. You had to explain why you had. I had to explain why I had, which would have no, it wouldn't be a normal question now. No, that would be just a regular thing to, to do. Yeah. At the time, was uh, are you being in the army? No. Uh, why do you have been in jail? No. Why do you have to do? This? I like them. Ah, okay. Well, I, <laughs> at least was this the best. No, but he um, was not. He was. He was a smart guy. He was a smart guy. He was funny. He was he was incredible because the first thing he did when I arrived, I arrived in this room and he was there. So um, it was a time where uh, it was uh, very uh, very often it was uh, Palestinians used to put bombs on plane in the seventies. Mm -hmm. So the yeah, first thing, time. yeah, I was smart. The first thing he did. I was sitting in a chair and he said, ah, could, you, could you hold this for me, please? And he gave me uh, an hand grenade. So I was standing there with this grenade in my hand and he was looking something, he was pretending to be something in, a, in this uh, drawers. And I said, hey, doctor, what should I wear with this, this grenade? Oh, no, 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 give me, give me, give me, give me back, thank you. Ah, do you know this is a grenade? Yes. Ah, well, have you been in the army? No, I haven't been in the army. I didn't serve. <laughs> I didn't serve in the army. Ah, and then he started asking, ah, you didn't go in the army. So what is this? Oh, my God. So they were there, the idea, you know, like, they will see you, see you. Yeah. Army of Crimea. Yeah. Army of Crimea, more or less. There was it. There was it. But it was, that's not the case anymore. I mean, you know, in some way, life, life is not the case. You're not being labeled now straight away. I no. mean, it, it somehow, I think, likely is not, it's not, it's not the case anymore. In the old days, it was uh, or a criminal or in the army, uh, but or drop out. I mean, a regular person, not, I, I mean, this was for Italy. 
Spain, France, because Northern Europe was different. Mm. Because Northern Europe, they, I mean, Northern Europe, Holland, Denmark, and whatever, they had a, a, a lot of sailing, um, a long yeah, range yeah, sailing. Sure. In Italy and Spain, we had more uh, uh, Mediterranean uh, sailing, so it was more uh, more restricted. It was not so open. And then there is another problem: it was a, a religious problem, because as I was saying before, for the religion, for the Catholic religion, yeah, for Catholic, yeah, as the Japanese say, the man, no way. Now, yeah. times are different, times are changing, thank God. And uh, so it's much, much better. Much better. Well, at least we can, uh, how do you say, uh, leave tattooing, the world of tattooing with, in some ways, also somewhat freedom these days. And sure. Without you know, being afraid of being judged and labeled. It's a way of self expression. I mean, uh, you you put on yourself what what you feel you should have but in the old days you put on yourself what i mean you could read a man you could read it because he was putting him on him what he wanted if he was an army man if he was a, a, a thief if he was a, a traveler a nowadays it's a little bit more confusing because uh, the the tattooing world expanded so much so now we went into an art form so people is putting on on himself and tattoos they're putting on the skin uh, they're painting they're not tattooing anymore in as i see it this is my point of view uh, they are painting on skin yeah and and that's why i made this Personally, I make this film. So tattooing is tattooing, and demographic is another thing. It's two different spirits. It's two different spirits. Tattooing, I recall tattooing still as something that you put on yourself, something because you want to remember something. You have to fix a moment of your life, of your story, of your love, of your hate, your dreams. Uh, Making tattoo like they do today is a more an art form, it's more decoration. It's a, it's a form of self-expression. I mean, you know, like some people, they, as you said, like I have the same thing. Yeah. I collect stuff normally when, when, when I feel it's the right time, right sure. moment to get a tattoo, to get a person I like, in a moment I like. Uh, and there is some other people which they, they, they simply just want to collect nice art that they think sure. they sure. that. Yeah. And I think <laughs> in some ways that's also okay. I think everyone has his own reasons to anybody has his personal reason to do it. And yeah. it's, uh, it's a very nice thing. Uh, what personally I don't uh, recall it uh, uh, smart is when they do it just for fashion. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely agree. I mean you shouldn't because you shouldn't do yourself Hey, because, because I'm, afraid, I'm afraid that in a few years' time, a lot of people is going to regret it. Well, yeah, because because a, lot a lot of work people, for laser. Lot of people, yeah. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> in fact, <laughs> now the, the, the latest trend is a basal removal. Yes, that it's, it's it's sometimes could be a disaster. It's not something I would uh, recommend. I mean, you know, you always have to keep in mind if you do a tattoo, you should keep it forever. Removing a tattoo is anyhow not really healthy for your body when the ink breaks down. Even, even, because, down. Even, even, even because, I mean, the moment you put a tattoo in you is the moment of your life, and then uh, you should remember it with a cheer, with pleasure, or, or, or with sorrow, no, no matter. But it's a moment of your life. And uh, even if you have a tattoo that you don't like, or you do, uh, it's, it's a moment, it's been a moment of your life. So you should recall it as uh, as your history, yeah. always. I find that to be very stupid if you get a tattoo uh, that has no meaning for the sake of doing it. For the sake of doing it. And today, 
I think a lot of people, a lot of young people especially, they're getting a tattoo just to just to add, just to call, just to be fooled. Because more you fool, the more you you show, the more you look. Well, I, I think like, that in, in my personal have... experience, it, get, it also gets a little bit addictive. Well, it's getting more that is collective. Yeah. It's collective. You get a collection for this artist, for that artist, yeah. for that artist. Yeah, yeah. So you become a collector. A collector. That's the other field. Well, that's another field. Sure, sure. I know a lot of a lot, lot of guys. I mean, a lot of friends that are collectors. And uh, yeah, I, I do consider myself, for example, my own person, something between a collector and somebody which collects stories as well. Sure. In between. You know, it's like I'm not really, you know, if I would do something just to show off, I'll probably do one huge piece in one style. But I do like a lot of here yeah, in Asia, Japanese style or Asian style, just one giant tattoo. A giant tattoo, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that, that's, another, that's another, that's another, the body suit is another. That's another philosophy. Another that's philosophy, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. That's another philosophy. Uh, but, but it's okay. You, for a few, many years, you know, this Japanese work, it's been very popular. I look amazing. I mean, sure, so, sure. Yeah, but you, but you, you must be very, very, very concerned about. I mean, it takes a long time, a lot of money, a lot of uh, uh, it's a big effort, a lot of money, a lot of pain. I'm not going to that direction. Anymore. It's too late already. So. <laughs> I messed up my body already. Too much to go into that. Yes, uh, it's a nice. Uh, it's a nice story. You know, tattooing is a wonderful word. It's a wonderful uh, history. The history of man, of, of the mankind. I mean, this, this uh, fantastic uh, uh, image that you have, that you put on your skin to remember your, your, your moments, your story, your, your views, your, your history, your friends, your, your moments, your life. And nobody can take it away from you. Nobody can take it away from you. That is probably the difference between tattooing before and tattooing now. Now, before you put tattoos on your body, because there were moments of your life in your days. Now it became a sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, like a, like a nice, you, you buy a nice shirt. Okay? Yeah, like it. You put on the shelf a nice so, um, vezzo. In English, sorry, I'm like, uh, uh, vezzo. Uh, vezzo in English. We don't have that in the It's a something you put because you want to show something. You want, I mean, uh, you, you go in the shop. It's more futile or something. Uh, yeah, it's more, uh, more something to do. Uh, you do it. The lady that was doing the, 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 the Greek face, she made. The seven, the same face on seven different people. Sometimes in the old days, that we was a little bit more personal. It reminds us. Today is just uh, uh, an image that you put on the chest. Yeah, we know real meaning. Guys. It doesn't have exactly as I, this is the way I record it. Today, people put a dose on themselves without a real meaning, without a reason. In the old days, you used to put a tattoo on you for a reason. Each one of these reminds me of a moment, a person, a story, a love, a place. And now you get a tattoo. Sometimes, you know, maybe having ever a lot of people, I, a lot of people I met, I asked them. What did you do that? Uh, I don't remember. Who did it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no. What was the name of the artist? No, I, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? So I didn't do it. Do you know? Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, it's just to put something on you for, for no reason. For no reason. Just because the fashion now, the trend is to be, to have, to be covered. To have here and there and there and there. Uh, another thing that, that I've seen in the last recent years, it was the changing of the of the designs. Uh, when this uh, old style design started to come again, 
they were done over again, all these gypsy ladies. Oh, yeah. You know? It's a nice design. <laughs> I mean, I love, I love the, 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 the original one. The original one is the original one, you know? It gives a lady, it's okay. But afterwards, all these gypsy ladies, it's a different... Uh, it's a beautiful fashion. It's a beautiful fashion. All these geishas, with, with, with the, they are not geishas, but they are pin-up geishas. <laughs> Well, to make it a little bit more palatable. Unfortunately, I'm a kind of, for a few things, I'm a kind of an old fashioned guy. I don't know if it's, it's okay. <laughs> you like you can afford to do that, to be old fashioned. You know what I mean? I say exactly what you think. I think that a lot of people nowadays are tattooing, are putting tattoo themselves, they shouldn't do it. Because a lot of them, unfortunately, uh, country regretted. In fact, now there's a, uh, work is very, becoming very, very, very popular. But then uh, you have to consider that uh, once you put a tattoo on you, to take it off completely, one of the few that I've seen completely off is a mark. Yeah, true. Marco yeah. Leone, in the forehead, you cannot see no. absolutely exactly. nothing. Because I was, I was watching carefully. Nothing, so absolutely nothing. nothing. And I just asked to Marco, so Marco, why how come you're taking uh, your tattoos are, well, I'm getting bold. <laughs> so aging. 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 Yeah. But it's very, very difficult that a tattoo is removed without leaving any trace. Very yes. difficult. And again, anyhow, it's not good for your health. It's not it's good, good for your health. Sure, sure. The pigments so, want to break down. You don't want to have them spreading around your body. Yeah. Inks are safe. But again, you don't want the thickness to break. Nowadays, the inks, yes, nowadays the inks are safe. I cannot imagine what 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 we put in under our skin in the old days. Yes, yeah, you remove uh, tattoos which are 30, 40 years old, probably even 20, then you don't exactly know what's in there. Right. It's yeah. ink, but you don't exactly know what was it. And this one that I had in Kathmandu in the street, thank God. It's a very simple one, but I cannot remember. It's still super it. solid. It's super solid. It's <laughs> incredible. It's like 50 years old. This is 1970. 52 years old. 52 years old. The sun, the like made uh, a week ago. Yeah. Okay. Incredible. Still that good ink by then. <laughs> I cannot imagine what kind of ink he was there. I cannot I imagine. Idea. It was not sure, sure China ink was not sterilized. It was just, I don't, want, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> well, I know, it's still there, so it did job. Still there. It's like this one. This is the last that we got from Life Tattoo. Right. Two years ago, Life Tattoo came yes. to Rome and uh, he was in, uh, with us for, for a couple of months enjoying life in Rome and then uh, he was in a Kubo uh, shop and everybody was going is senior to but I thought well to get the senior to was silly and I said to just make me a small anchor uh, over my hand. So you were one of the few last lucky ones to get a tattoo. Yes I was one of the few lucky ones to get a tattoo from life. Nice guy. Yes another legend by the way. <laughs> we can we can make another another episode here just talking about. And I got a few. I got Pinky Young, Lyle, uh, Oriochi. Uh, what else? 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 The known one, uh, Brian Everett. Uh, you want to show? You want to show? No, I don't do nothing. Bill Solomon, Bill Solomon, Bill Solomon, Candy Everett, there you go. Rollo, even if Rollo, Mike Malone, oh, yeah. I, even if the color doesn't show anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I know it's still there. Technically, it's still there. I know it's still there. It's still a very good collection. 
Yeah, 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 very nice. Uh, oh, this other one back here. Uh, what's the name? How about this one here? Yeah. Hey, this one here. Yeah, yes. Oh my God, what's his name? Um, it's, it's a Dutch guy who used to work in uh, with uh, with uh, Life Tattoo in San Francisco. Uh, I'm getting old. Name, yeah. name, <laughs> getting old. Name, I'm terrible name. with this. I'm never going to find it. So. Horyoshi, of course. I still have to go to finish this from Horyoshi. So that's the plan for this year, next year. It would be nice to go back to Japan and finish it. But uh, oh, it going nice. on with the years, the, the, the needle is. Uh, it gets more. Not so pleasant it's anymore. Not so not so pleasant anymore. And I should say the only ocean, ding, 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 ding. It goes pretty fast and pretty deep. Pretty still deep. Then? Yes. Still rocking, eh? Still rocking. It's still rocking. It's part of the experience to get a tattoo by him like this. It was, it was uh, very nice that I met his son a few years ago in uh, Shanghai, in Bangkok. And I remember when he was a little, a little boy. And, uh, so are you. Or you um, well, now it's Oriyoshi the fourth. Yeah, it should be Oriyoshi the fourth. Oriyoshi's all over. So are you. Yeah. Katsuoshi. 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 Got a little tattoo as well from him. A frog. Oh, yeah? And tap oh, yeah. Nice. That's from him. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frog, yeah. yeah. And that's Singapore. Singapore. The big and Singapore. Thing. Yes, yeah, well, I couldn't get it from his father, but uh, like it is. No, in Singapore, I have a two tattoo from the original Johnny Tutan. Johnny Tutan was a Nepalese guy. Another historical figure in tattooing Singapore. Johnny Tutan. All the oldest tattoo studio in Singapore. Was, and, uh, the oldest Singapore studio. He was in the back of a pen shop. It was a tiny, right, tiny yeah. shop, and he was big, uh, big yeah. as the shop. I have one here, one here. Journey to time. He was a Nepalese guy. Nepalese, yeah. And he's one also of the oldest of the studio on the planet. If I, if I, it's, it's in the top 10 oldest of the studio, and, uh, as yes. far as I know, and it's still there. He was another, another guy. I remember he had two boards, one for Westerners, one for Singaporean. Yes, the Singaporean yeah. couldn't get the same tattoo as the Westerner, because for Singaporean, uh, the 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 eagle, some eagles some dragons would it be that they belong to a different uh, uh, groups oh, mafia okay. I mean, kind of uh, local uh, you couldn't get some kind you of couldn't things. get those kind of uh, those kind of tattoos so those were only for foreigners enough <laughs> and we had this shop but it could fit him and the client that's all. No, that's what you, that's what you need space. to say. No other space. The same thing happened in the Jock, Jock Tattoo Shop, in uh, Tattoo Studio in, uh, in London. Jock was a huge guy. A huge guy, huge. guy in a really tiny. Okay. Also place. him. One photo black, one red, one green. It's Vaseline and a machine. Him big like this. Three colors. Three colors. And that was that was it. Ancient time of tattooing. Ancient time of tattooing. Yeah. Yeah. Burchett uh, was a, a better shop. It was bigger. Leslie Burchett was a bigger shop. Was no, not Leslie Burchett. Mm -hmm. The son of Burchett. George Leslie Burchett was the son of George Burchett. Mm -hmm. And he stayed in the shop of his father. That was a, a bigger shop, a proper shop. He made me this butterfly. There you go. I still yeah. have as well. Still pretty solid as well. Uh, 1970. Wow. 1970. Oh, 50, yeah. Great. And I remember the guy, when I went into the shop, he had a, a big passion on his head because he was complaining the day before somebody banging on the head not for not paying him. Oh. And he ran away. <laughs> it was a. Uh, it was wild back then. I was, well, London was pretty wild. Yeah, it was in the 70s and all these rocks and modes. And, uh, it was fun. 
the new plan. Nice. I think, you know, there will be a lot of more stories. I remember that when I was in the pool in the public library, all of a sudden I started shaking. I was like, oh my God, what's happening? I'm, I'm shaking because I'm afraid. Then I realized I was shaking because it was cold. It was freezing cold. You're in England. <laughs> it's cold. No, he didn't know that. It was freezing cold. <clears throat> no, but I mean, you were in England. Right. Yeah, it was England. It was England. It was in 1970. You used like to more. Yeah, 1970. I just came back from uh, just came back from uh, from India. I stopped in England and I was on the way to to United States. So by the time you opened the the Tusa, you were already relatively heavily to do it by the time. No, not that much. Oh yeah, I, mean, I had some. I had some. When I opened, when I opened the, the, the shop, the regular shop in Rome, I had something because I already had this from uh, from Pinky Yan. Uh, I had already this from uh, Oriyoshi. Uh, I had some some of this one from from Leslie. This one from Doc Forest from Sweden. So I had some. But when I started doing, I, I just had the one from uh, in the beginning, only the one I made, uh, I made in India. Only the one I made in India. Yeah, you gotta start somewhere. And this one that I made in Hong Kong. Because when I was uh, the one here, I started doing. No, when I made this one, uh, I wasn't uh, doing it yet. When I put the color on the sun, I wasn't uh, doing it because I was flying. For, for the airlines, and uh, but it was in the beginning that I was flying for the airlines. So, no, even before I was working in New York, when I had the color done by Mike Malone on the sun, I was working in New York. I, I was not a doing it. I was not a doing it. <clears throat> so, I didn't have that much. But for a time. For the time it was for the, yeah, time, for the, the time, time was quite. for the time in Italy it was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. In Italy for the time it was a lot. Because in Italy it was not very popular at the time. Very I mean in Italy at the time in the 70s, people that had tattoos, they were only uh, drops out from, from jail. People that came out from jail. Yeah, yeah. I, I, because there were no shops, no, nobody was to do. Which I think I think it's gay gay. Oh, uh, Alex, yes, we do have, this is amazing, but we do have another stream coming up. Yeah, no, I, I thought so. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, they have to do uh, like another streaming with another. Uh, well, it was a pleasure to stay with you. Yes, uh, we're going to see you, Gabe, a lot, but thank you for having us. And uh, GP, thank you for, uh, for sharing all your stories. I mean, I think, you know, GP has enough stories for at least ten other episodes or something. <laughs> well, it was, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to be with you and uh, a big shout to the tattoo world and to everybody that will see this. Yes, it was a pleasure to stay with you. Same here. Thank you, everyone, and uh, yeah, thanks again, GP. And if you want to stay on top of the two conventions again, go visit worldspeedevents.com. With uh, the two convention is here there, yeah, one and there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks again, everyone. And uh, Gabe, thank you. We'll uh, see you next time. This was Alex from Dutch and JP Londinella. Awesome. Thanks again, fellas. We'll talk soon. Cheers.